So welcome. This is episode 300 of the Clive Barker podcast. Um, yeah, we've already got quite a few people on here. We expect more to be uh, coming on and off as the hour goes by. Um, just want to say this is a big milestone. Um, yeah. This episode is sponsored by Don Bertram Celebrate Imagination. He might come on too. We, I don't know. But uh, Don Bertram Celebrate Imagination Shop is dedicated to the arts and medicine program at Texas Children's Cancer Center. Uh, up to 50% of the proceeds. Um, hey, Simon is here. Hey, Simon. Hi, <laughs> Hooray. Simon Bamford, the chatterer. I mean, not the chatterer. I'm sorry, Butterball. <laughs> <laughs> Butterball and... and uh, Oh my gosh. Oh, there you go. Now there's the chatterer. Yeah, yes. I, 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 off, I, the, off the, the problem was now. that I was off just psychic. That's what it was. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yes. Welcome, guys. Welcome. Okay. <laughs> Hello, folks. All, All right. right. Hello. So anyway, oh. on, on our website, we have a, a link to the uh, the Etsy shop for for um, Don Bertram Celebrate Imagination, and all the, here's one of his paintings. All the proceeds go to uh, the pro, his proceeds go to the Arts and Medicine Program at Texas Children's Cancer Center. That's right. Thank you so much, Don, for making this happen and helping yeah. out with the uh, podcast. He's been, yeah. also been on the podcast uh, a few times, and it's always a pleasure. He's a big, he's an artist, a painter, and a big Clyde Barker fan. Hi, Clive Barker fans. This is Jonathan Q, Hellraiser fan, Clive Barker fan, and past guest host. I just wanted to congratulate Ryan, Jose, and the rest of the Clive Barker podcast crew on an amazing milestone. 300 episodes. That's, that's, just, that's just incredible. Especially given everything you guys have already accomplished, you guys have changed the course of Clive Barker fandom with Occupy Midian, and I can't wait to see what else is coming in the future from you guys, including the interview book and whatever projects uh, you guys have planned. So once again, congratulations on this amazing milestone, and thank you uh, for the opportunity to be able to to come in and congratulate you guys. This has been this has been wonderful, and I can't wait to see where the journey leads. All right, so it looks like we already got some special guests coming in and some listeners. This is awesome. Let's let's start uh, let's start introducing some people here. Mm, so, yeah. okay, let me just get to my notes here. This is going to be live, so it's a work in pro <laughs> progress, guys. Um, first of all, I'd like to open with a message from Clive. Um, so, Phil and Sarah of the Clive Barker Archive. They said that we spoke with Clive this evening. And he said he'd heard from Simon about the, the episode. Alas, the timing doesn't work for him, but he sends his hearty congratulations on the milestone of episode 300. Yeah, baby. <laughs> and right. uh, they also sent a canvas from Clive uh, for the, um, uh, it, to congratulate us. They sent a picture of a painting and I'm about to get that. So in the meantime, Ryan, if you want to okay. introduce some of our other guests. Yeah, yeah. So I'll turn on screen sharing if you want to share that canvas here. Oh yeah, okay. absolutely. Mm -hmm. All right. So yeah. Um so Gary Smart, you I guess you came on here first. Um yeah. <laughs> so so we've got uh, we've got another um there's another Dark Diddies episode coming out soon, right? Hopefully soon, yeah. I mean lockdown has obviously caused some problems, but obviously we're out of yeah. lockdown tomorrow, kind of. So um we're back on track now. So yeah, hopefully the next month minimum it's gonna be out and ready, yeah. And we have a clip from that that you sent us. Oh, nice. an exclusive clip. Let's let's look at the trailer. <laughs> yeah. It's not a trailer. The teaser. <laughs> teaser. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like about a minute. All right, Ryan's setting that up. Okay. Here we go. Gotta put in the password. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Live show people. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, so here we go. Oh, it started when I wasn't ready. Okay. Share screen. You get to hear how. Yeah, so the, 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 doing this by Zoom sometimes is a little complicated. We were testing this out last night. Okay, here we go. Oh, shoot. There's no sound, right? Is there? <laughs> <laughs> I need to go back and start it again. That's fine. That's fine. <laughs> Don't worry about it, it's crap. <laughs> oh. uh, Simon's not in that scene. Don't worry about it. And so this um this is the sixth episode, right? Uh no, number five. We've we just written episode six, and Simon's got his script now for number six. 
Excellent, excellent. And this scene is pretty intense. There's uh, two two actors in this scene. Do you want to say the names of the actors? Yeah, we've got Michael Higgs playing Dr. Brunner and we've got Corin Silva playing David. Yeah. They're having a very intense conversation here <laughs> about uh, Crane and what he wants. Tut tut, David. Did you think the end of the world would absolve you? You asked and he answered. Crane is all and yet he answered a little boy's hate. Gave you your heart's desire. Bullshit. I asked him for nothing because he's not real. He's in my head. He's a kid's nightmare. And what happened was my fault. And mine alone, there's no crane, there's just a fucked up kid that was just made. You'll give him what you asked for. The boy, the mother, and the father. <laughs> Did you truly believe that he would relent? Your father does not belong to you. He belongs to my lord. He's my dad. He's cattle. His soul is the sucker of the risen word. He is ours, and you will deliver him to us by your own hand. Whoa. Ooh. 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 <laughs> Girls, man. <laughs> There are some funny, funny moments in that episode as well. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. But this this is connecting oh, yeah. everything together with the crane, the cult of crane that we saw in the uh, the previous one. And uh, wow, it's uh, it's amazing Ooh. that you. Ooh. Oops, someone dropped in. Hey, Mike. <laughs> wow, that's your face is all red, Ryan. So that's wonderful. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. And uh, do you have any idea what date it's going to come out at some point? No, I mean, obviously, once it gets edited, uh, sorry, mm -hmm. screen, um, color graded, sorry, it's on the stage about at the moment. It normally takes about two weeks for kind of like the processing with Amazon to get it online. So mm -hmm. hopefully by the end of the month, I'm hoping. What we're in now, I can't remember where we are now. We're in April, aren't we? <laughs> Just yeah. Middle of April. <laughs> so yeah, hopefully uh, by this time next month, it should be out. It's got Excellent. to be out. <laughs> Excellent. So I, I do uh, recommend our listeners to to go check out the Dark Ditties and the Leviathan documentary, as well as you know the the cleaning up the town. Is that it? Uh, the Ghostbusters. Yeah, no. that's nothing to do with me. No, that's that's not yours. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, it's good, <laughs> the, it's good. The, the Fright Night documentary for sure, and the the yeah. the RoboCop one. So yeah, uh, yeah Cult Screenings Limited, and uh, we also have joining us today. Um, uh, Simon Bamford, who was in episode number six and episode 198 and episode 177. <laughs> um, hey, hey, Simon, how are you doing today? I'm good. I'm good. It's nice seeing that little clip from uh, from the Dark Dishes. Yeah. yeah. The, uh, it's a good, it's a really good episode. Episode five, Dad, is really good. It's very moving. Some of the scenes I couldn't watch, I, I saw them shooting and I thought, I can't watch this a second time because it's just too upsetting it's it's good it's really good <laughs> you're also producing the dark Ditties now right um executive producer yes yeah, which is yeah. not not really the same as actually doing all the hard work that they do but uh, it's got a nice mm. title to it <laughs> i don't know simon i'm a set now you do a lot more kind of running around and organizing and you than you used to you you know you work with your money now i did on the dad one i did a lot more than yeah. i had before yeah <laughs> wow and, uh, yeah, and we've got the script for number six now, which is the series finale, I think, for for uh, for this, and uh, and that's that's good because there's some like uh, nice um, characters that we're going back to, which uh, I don't know if I'm allowed to talk about, Gary, but hey. yeah, go on, I don't, I don't care. <laughs> so you know, see, Mrs. Wiltshire, she comes, she comes back in episode oh. six, but is oh. a younger version. So wow, yeah, so fabulous! That's going to be. A challenge. Yeah. <laughs> you have to shave your arms again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a top lip. <laughs> amazing, amazing. Um, I, meanwhile, I just found here real quick, I just want to share this. So I found the, the canvas that Clive sent for the celebration. And let me see if I can share that screen right now. Okay, here we go. Let's see. Can you guys see my screen? 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and that says, uh, reaching 300 is a huge achievement, and we're raising a glass to you from London. Please feel free to share this canvas of Clive's today as a toast to your continuing success. <laughs> All best wishes, Phil and Sarah. All right. Well, thank you, <laughs> Phil and Sarah and Clive. That was yes. nice. And, uh, and again, we got Nicholas Vince, and you've been with us on episode number, let's see, what episode was it? Number 11, number 25, and number 72. So we were talking <laughs> about right. some of your books. And right now, you've got the Chattering Hour going on, the new podcast, right, with Chris Rowe Management? That's right, yes. How's that so going? Think, it's going great. I've been lucky enough to talk to some really great icons from the horror world yeah. uh but also you know from not horror world i was talking to an actor called monty markham the other day uh that show just went live on thursday okay. um, monty you know he was in the guns of the magnificent seven so i've been watching that actor since oh, the 1970s wow. and he's just the loveliest guy just the greatest guy i've been chatting to d wallace barbara crampton um malcolm mm -hmm. mcdowell uh, obviously we, st we started off with but really fascinating chats with people who've mm -hmm. been in the business for anything three four five decades um and you know a little wealth of experience and so on so we you know there'd be some really fascinating insights into the way they work and stories from behind the set and a lot of fun, you know, just really genuinely nice people. So I've been having a great time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think the first episode of the Chattering Hour was with Malcolm McDowell. That's right. Yes. Yeah. 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 What a, what a great, what a great character he is. I mean, it's just oh, so much fun. He is, yeah, genuinely very interesting. And you know, so many great stories to to tell. Um and so on. And I think that's what's been most fun about it is just really, I think Courtney Gaines, another actor who he said afterwards that he'd actually spoken about stuff he'd never actually, he'd not spoken about before. Mm -hmm. Because I think because we know we're actors just chatting really about what we're, you know, what we do and we have a common, you know, <laughs> their careers are so much bigger than mine. But um, it's just kind of like a couple of actors chatting really about what, yeah. you know, about the business, about what you go through on set and uh, and and so yeah. on. So, uh, yeah, we, I kind of get some insights that perhaps they, they haven't uh, shared in the past. So that's, that's worth going back. Courtney is a really interesting uh, episode as well. Oh, I'm that. sure, yeah. <laughs> We'll make sure to put a link to the uh, the chattering hour in our show notes, and it's a, like a spiritual successor to your uh, previous hangout series, yeah. which was chattering with Nicholas Vince, right? Yeah, absolutely. So I mean, basically, when lockdown started, um, uh, you know, Chris, we, we were just chatting of things to do and things to keep us I was occupied, um, really, and just kind of taken off. We we're doing very well on podcast, particularly. It's available on the Chris Rowe Management, but it's available on seven different podcast platforms, all the usual, Google, um, Spotify, etc. Yeah. You can listen to it as a podcast as well. Some people listen to it as a podcast, some watch it on YouTube. But I've also been like, you know, like Simon as well. I've been lucky enough to be doing some filming uh, oh, yeah? During lockdown as well, I had uh, two, two, three films came out last year. Oh wow! Um, Paintball Massacre, Heckle, um, came wow. out during lockdown. <laughs> Just I finished filming for another one. I think it's called Advent or the Krampus Calendar. Um, it's, it's like all these films; they're so early in production. The titles of the films sometimes change, but you know, it's one thing when I read the script, and there's another. Yeah. Um, but I've been working with a guy called Anthony House, and, uh, and so that so I should have at least another feature film coming out fairly soon. Fabulous! Um, we'll be here so to promote yeah. that as soon as it comes out. Cool. Um, yeah, going back to some memories from the, the the almost ten years that we've been doing this. When we had you on the show, I remember one of the first things we were talking about was that you went to Mount View Academy, um, mm. and and that's where you met Simon. And yes. apparently, his hair was bright pink at the time. You remember that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I must say hello to Paul Kane, who's joined us. By the way. Oh, hey, Paul. Oh, right. 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 Paul. <laughs> All joined us halfway through this. Um, <laughs> yes, I, I told this story before, I'm sure. Basically, I remember very clearly at the beginning of one term, um, the administrator, the lady, just made Simon stand up and take his cap off because she wanted to see what color hair he had. Yeah. 
Because <laughs> you used to sell hair colours, didn't you, Simon? And, yeah, uh, yeah, I used to sell crazy colour. It was the first time you could buy that really bright colours for your hair anywhere in the world. And it was in Camden Market, London, which was really kind of cool kind of place <laughs> to sell it. And I worked with uh, a lady called Dempsey Dunkley Clark, and we sold their hair to Toya. Toya Wilkins. Oh. She, her hair colour there. I don't know if anybody remembers Toya. <laughs> Funnily enough, she was in one of the films I've just mentioned. Oh, is she? Uh, wow. Yeah, Toya's in Heckle. Yeah. <laughs> so she's still going strong. Um, uh, and you mentioned Barbara Crampton. So Barbara Crampton is also in Sacrifice, which is a movie uh, uh, based on an adapted story from Paul Kane, yeah. which was Men of the Cloth. And I've, <laughs> I've seen that movie. We talked to Paul Kane recently. And by the way, hello, Paul, you know, oh. author from uh, Hellraisers, uh, the Hellraiser films and their legacy, <laughs> you know, uh, Red, uh, so many other movies, so many books. And, Sherlock and, and Holmes stuff. and the Servants of Hell. Yes. Yeah. I'm a little overwhelmed today because we have such amazing guests, but uh, <laughs> yeah, it, it's clear <laughs> who's all here. Yeah, we've had you in so many episodes, Paul, and you've always been so so kind and such a pleasure to talk to. Uh, it, it's nice to see you here for the 300th celebration. Yeah, it's yeah. nice to be here. <laughs> Wonderful. Can you hear Wonderful. me? Can you hear me? Yeah, perfect. Everything <laughs> yeah. is coming in crystal clear. Uh, um, really. Yeah, so we got more people coming in. We uh, to, to in order to kind of stagger the guest list a little bit. I think that Doug and and Barbie is going to come in pretty soon. Uh, Pete Atkins is also going to show up. So it, it's going to be a hellbound reunion of a sort. <laughs> yeah, this is so cool. Hi, Joe. Hey, <laughs> who is that? Hello. Ed. <laughs> Ed. Oh, hey, hey Ed! Oh, <laughs> <Look at that. laughs> hey everybody! It's Ed oh, Martinez man. from uh, Ed Wilson. <laughs> Special effects artist <laughs> coming to us from Hayward. Oh, California. nice. Hey, what's up? Who all is here? You're looking a little uh, 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 button face today. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just so, the button face. Yeah. Hey, you actually flew Nicholas Vince once to San Francisco for a convention, didn't you? For Cenobium? Actually, he came to San Diego Comic Book Convention. Oh, there you go. Do you remember is that, that Nick? Is Nick there? I do. Yeah. Yes, I do. I do. Yes. Um, yeah. God. That, yeah. I was there. Yes. No. Yeah. So no did fly me to San Diego Comic Con. Yeah. <laughs> had a great time there. Met, yeah. Met some wonderful people there. <laughs> now we have footage, Nick. We have videotape footage of you there. Videotape of Nick oh, with a okay. big full head of hair. Ooh, <laughs> yeah. That must have been a very long time ago. Back in the day. <laughs> And that's Nina, Nina Arlene as well, who uh, oh, hi, who, Nina. <laughs> who made some covers for Cenobium and all sorts of stuff. Um, that's amazing. So let's see. And Lori, Lori, you're there. Uh, do you have anything new for the Simon Bamford uh, fan world coming up or the Dark Ditties world? I heard you uh, probably working on some sort of fan page. Um, well, just kind of in its infancy right now. Yeah. Begging the masters, so to speak. <laughs> I've just realized that Simon's head I can see at the bottom of Laurie's screen. <laughs> I recognize yes. that hairline, Simon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And of course, we got Eric, Eric Gross from uh, Followers of the Pandorix. Hey, Eric, how are you doing Hi. today? Hi, Hi, Eric. Good. Hello. You've made Hello, some Eric. really amazing like boxes and uh hellraiser boxes and i, I believe that you were working on some some uh, uh boxes for, we will call pandorix for um for a barbie and and someone else right yes i am yeah uh nico yeah yeah how do you make them yes how I'm do sorry. you make them how do i make them yes uh, i'm sorry a little hard here uh i transfer the art and make molds. Um, here, hold on a second. They are cast. Yeah, these are, can you see that? Resin? Yeah, holding up a yeah it is. So Ed is actually a blind podcaster, so he can't see it, but I'll explain to him. So he's showing off a, a, a box and the panels are transferred onto a mold and then he casts them with resin and he has to be very careful because he has to make sure all the corners of the panels fit and that's really hard work isn't it eric yeah yeah so yeah, what do you I, make your master casting your your mother mold where no no 
how the clay oh, oh, oh. Um, silicone wood. rubber. What is your master? Silicone rubber. Silicone rubber is this master mold? No, yeah. silicone's your mold. What's right. your what's your master, your your pattern? Your sculpture. Oh, uh, the two D art is transferred onto another. It's almost like photo etching, but it's it's more like a, a, a rubber plate instead of a metal plate. Oh, you mean like rubber stamp technology? Kind of like that. Okay, yeah, it's, so it's I reverse. Use... And then you make a silicone mold off the rubber and it creates the negative. Right, because I've tried doing 3D casting and it's uh, 3D work and it just doesn't hold the detail. You mean 3D printing? Yeah. Oh, I mean, you couldn't get good enough resolution. You couldn't get good enough resolution with 3D printing. I can't do oh. this with 3D. Yeah. Oh, wow. yeah, that looks amazing. Which no, which which very, design is that, Eric? What's it uh, called? Does it have a name? Yeah, it's uh, I think it's the Paleogenesis. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. There's so many of my lost track of the names. I get confused all the time. Yeah. <laughs> this yeah. one's actually uh, uh, a nod to Lovecraft. Okay. Oh. Uh, I love Lovecraft. This yeah. one, I don't know if you could see it because like right up, right I can, there. I can those make little it out. things. Mm -hmm. Those are, are uh, squid heads, actually, like a Cthulhu. Oh. I hint. Uh, gotcha. Oh. Cool. Like repeating design wow. is so. Head. There's a nod. That's yep. the name of my cat. My cat. <laughs> Cthulhu. <laughs> oh, no. Repeating designs is the name of your cat. No, oh, Cthulhu. Hey, Barbie. <laughs> Barbie is here. Hey, Barbie. So nice hey. to have you here. <laughs> oh my God! I didn't know if, if people could see me or hear me. Or there's Hi. well, then there's because I I've got this fabulous light. Oh, I can see people now, but the light is blocking Simon, which is sad. Oh, you look so beautiful today. <laughs> I do. Yeah. Thank you. And well, of course, here Simon's here, Nick is here, Barbie's here. Yeah, and Doug and Pete Atkins are going to show up pretty soon. They said they would show up in about another ten minutes or so. And we have Barbie Wild here from the Venus Complex and Voices of the Damned. Uh, you've yeah. been in our episode yeah. twenty-six and one hundred and four, so it's been a while since we've had you on the show. But it's great to have you here today. Thank you so much for joining us for well, the three hundred celebration. Thank you for inviting me. Yeah, we're we're gonna have a hellbound reunion, you know, unintentionally. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Yay, Barbie! Yeah, <laughs> and and uh, and you've had uh, you've had an audio book come out read by Doug Bradley. He he did. I the, have, uh, I yeah. have. He did a magnificent job, and it's called it's it's the audio book of the my diary, the serial killer novel, The Venus Complex. Mm -hmm. And um, it, he did a fab job. It was so much fun working with Doug again. We were, you know, because I basically, he asked me for direction and all this sort of stuff. And we had wonderful moments of, how are you going to pronounce Casodius? Right. <laughs> it's tricky. It's like, well, the, you he know. said, it's got to be Casodius. And I said, well, you know, my husband's, you know, his, 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 fa he's got, he's Norwegian, but the family part of it is Mexican. And that's how they pronounce it in Mexico. And he said, yeah, but. You know, if you're living in Syracuse, New York, you're not going to pronounce it the correct Spanish way. So, yeah, uh, yeah. but no, it's wonderful. I mean, it was also wonderful, um, again, working with Simon and Nick and um, um, Gary Smart. Yeah. There you are. And uh, um, Oliver and yes. Ken. Gary here. Is Gary Yay. smart here? Yes, yes. But yeah, he is. Okay. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> the sinister clown behind him. Um, yeah. You know, for for all the dark ditties presents things. I mean, I've I've done two so far, and Simon's done um, zillions of them, and it, yeah. it's it's been fabulous. Again, connecting with my old Cenobite chums. No, sorry, yeah. not old. My Cenobite chums. <laughs> yes. Well, yes. I tell you, I really love audiobooks because I'm blind now. And so the world of audio is my world now. Oh. Yeah, that's Ed so Martinez sorry. from Cenobia Magazine. I don't know if, if you were ever inter interviewed for Cenobia Magazine. It was a publication, a fan publication of Hellraiser. No, unfortunately, we weren't able to, to get her. Yeah. Well, you know, here's your here's your opportunity to ask her a question or so because um, that, that's you know that's a great opportunity now. But uh, Synobium ran for how many issues, Ed? It was twenty, at or? least fifteen. But 15. we had some other half and quarter issues and stuff. So like maybe 
18. 18. Yeah, and you would like drive over to all the conventions and you would interview all these people like Clive and Doug and Pete. Um, it was an amazing magazine. It's really hard to find now, but you know, maybe, maybe, maybe there'll be some, some, maybe we'll uh, bring it back. Yeah. Maybe we'll bring it back. Bring it back. And then I'll send you a review <laughs> copy of, of the audio book. Oh, we'll do that you. anyway. If well, you want. I've been, I've corresponded with you about how, you know, you did that one short story about the, the eyes and the blind, uh, you know, the girl and the, um, Oh, the, I remember. Yes. Yeah. I Patient love that story. K. Yeah. Patient K. That was yeah, a great the, story. Yeah, her it. her um her brother not uh, poked her eye out with a um, um BB gun, I think, because this was right, um right. I think I mentioned this. Yeah, My mother would always say, assaulted in the dentist, I mean, in the eye doctor office." Yeah, yeah, patient K is really disgusting, but I'm glad you <laughs> liked it. <laughs> yeah, I just suddenly realized. I Sorry really to enjoyed it. Go ahead. Oh, Sorry to interrupt. Yeah. The Zenobian yeah. story is the eye doctor. <laughs> Yeah, Some, Nico. somewhere I have got a Cenobium T-shirt. I swear, I've still got my Cenobi. Oh, I've got one on right. T-shirt. Oh, has got one on right now. <laughs> <laughs> You've got a Cenobium T-shirt, but there's definitely a Cenobunny T-shirt where basically all the Cenobites oh. from the first film done as bunnies. Yeah. Oh. Pink, pink bunnies. Oh, I love that. I That's, <laughs> That's um, great. She screamed. Pink bunnies. Yes. yes. <laughs> Wonderful. You've got to produce it, Nina. Have you got one to hand? Oh, you've got, We've what have you got there? Nina? I found this little guy, a little mouse. <laughs> a pinhead uh, mouse. Hey, Nick, you yes. think it was, you guys were poor bastards with your on set wearing a chatterer mask. Now it's permanent for me. <laughs> oh, oh, no, Ed, no, that's not true. I think you should take it off so we can see your beautiful face. <laughs> oh, that's so sad. I'm very sad to hear this. But of course, we did discuss it before. Listen, I just want to point out to people mm -hmm. that, that, can you hear me? I, I get confused yeah. by the thing. Absolutely. Um, that, um, that I have no brain left. <laughs> <laughs> so um, it's, 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 if I sort of forget who you are or whatever, it's, it's, um, you know, I know, I know, I know who that was. That was Simon. Very briefly. Yeah. I mean, it's great oh, yeah, that, that all the names are there. <laughs> no, no, I How is seriously, no, I can't. Sorry? How is the home? Are they looking after you? <laughs> you the home. Stay? Yes, darling, the home for the terminal <laughs> bewildered to take good care of me. Um, the home for it, monsters. That's what we oh need to God. start so that it's ready for monsters. us. Oh, that's yeah. a great film. Well. That's no, a no, great actually, film. The, the, the thing that I can remember, and it's really creepy for my hubby, is we're mm -hmm. watching an old episode of from the 60s of Hawaii Five-0. And I go, <laughs> whoa, look, there's William Shallert, man. And he's like going, how do you know <coughs> the names of these obscure B-movie actors? It just doesn't. <laughs> doesn't understand. Book them, Dano. Uh -huh. Oh, I love it. It's so comforting. And every night we watch it before we go to bed, and I just marvel at Jack Lord's hair. Oh, yeah. And his, yeah, his beautiful bouffant hair, which doesn't really move with all the tropical winds in Hawaii. But he the was palm almost trees Captain Kirk. Up. They almost cast him as Captain Kirk. Uh, I know. He didn't like the outfit, though. He said, oh, I'm not wearing those outfits. <laughs> no, well, no, I'm a bit of a Jack Lord and a Star Trek nut, actually. Oh, I love Star yeah. Trek. It's it's some of my favorite shows. Uh, so, Barbie, you were saying um, we were talking about the other day. I posted something about when I was in Paris. I was reading the the yes, Venus yes. Complex. Yeah, and I was reading the Venus Complex on the train, and it was quite an experience. But didn't you live in Paris at one point? No, no, no sadly. No. Okay. I've never yeah. lived in Paris. We sort of bounce around. Well, we haven't done that much lately. But, um, you know, I've always, um, I moved to Europe. It was London. And gotcha. that's where I sort of consider my home. But it's, it's, um, it's, these are such a strange, strange times at the moment. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. So, uh, no, Paris is a dream. But actually, you know, on um, TV, you can, we got YouTube on the TV. And my husband's, kids um well one of them lives in nice mm -hmm. and so yeah. you can there's actually a live cam of the nice promenade 
Oh, that's so wonderful. if we really want to depress ourselves, because it's his dream to, to move there one day, we just, <laughs> what's happening in Nice now? Bing. Oh, it's beautiful. Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm stuck in Ohio and Ryan is in Alaska. So right now yeah. we're both kind of like screwed. <laughs> You're in Ohio? Oh, I gosh, I thought Ohio you were now. in Arizona. I was. I was until January of last year. And then we moved over here. Um, because my wife got a, a, a job at the Air Force Base uh, as a scientist, as a senior scientist. Wow, she, is a, cool. she is a physicist. And, uh, and we ended up moving here. And uh, I, I was a little miserable at the beginning because Ohio is no Arizona. But, yeah. uh, but now the springtime is such a beautiful, such a beautiful place uh, over here. And uh, oh, right. we, still, every day. we still have four feet of snow. Oh, my God. Oh, Ryan. oh that's <laughs> ugly. Ooh. Ooh. Well, um, I did want to. I have to say that I did. I've only been. I think I haven't. Shut up! Oh, I, this, my phone is driving me nuts. Sorry. Oh, it's reminding me about the podcast. Okay. Oh, all right. There you go. Um, yeah. I had a dirty weekend in Cleveland once. That's my my claim to fame as far as Ohio is concerned. There you go, <laughs> Cleveland. Yeah, it's a perfect I, place. I did um, want to mention that uh, Dr. Sorka Neeline uh, is here. Um, she wrote Clive Barker, Dark Fantastic. Uh, oh, Dark Imaginer. Oh. Dark Imaginer, geez. It's, Dark Fantastic is a completely different book. Dark Fantastic. Oh, hi, everybody. Yes. Hi. 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 Lovely to see you guys. Welcome, Fantastic welcome. Brilliant. So nice. We all are welcome. Sorry yeah. about that. I'm, I'm a little <laughs> overwhelmed. <laughs> we, we have Dr. Decker there. It's Ed Martinez from the old Cenobium Hellraiser magazine. Yep. And hey, Sorka, we actually did a, an interview with a vampire yes. commentary track. We should have uh, we should have invited you because you did a panel recently on vampires, right? Yeah, no, I've recently read a book on vampires. I've uh, been writing about them and teaching Clive to our master's and PhD students and teaching Clive's oh. work. And obviously you specialize in vampires and horror stories. I've met Vince and Barbie before what? when they were in Manchester several years ago now for the Hellraiser um, Hellbend reunion. Yes. Um, yeah, so it's it's oh, yeah. absolutely fantastic to see everybody uh, wherever you are in the world. It's absolutely brilliant. We're in Manchester. We've had snow and sunshine today, so we've had a bit <laughs> of right. And I, I did bring along a little little friend just to keep everything nice. Oh, all right. Nice. Oh. But, yeah, so I've got my Hellraiser stuff downstairs. This is all I could bring into the office today. So you know, yeah, but it was really uh, yeah. No, if you've got vampires you want to talk about or new vampire stuff, I mean, uh, anytime, guys. Anytime. Yeah. Hey, I just happen to have a story, a vampire story oh, that I'd love to send you and get your opinion on. Yeah, absolutely. Can I then, can I take up the, um, because I think that sounds fantastic, Barbie. Can I take, uh, can I ask a favor of you all fabulous, wonderful, very knowledgeable, brilliant people. I'm currently in a huge project on, um, on the 1980s and running a scholarly book. And I, as people who have obviously been practitioners in that period, writers in that period, creators in that period. Can I follow up with you at some point for um, interviews and insights? I think that would only make it a richer, more brilliant thing. And I, you would have my eternal thanks. And you'd be doing sure. scholars of the world a huge favor because, you know, academia is a little behind. So it's good <laughs> to kind of bring them up to date with a vengeance. So um, if, you're, if you're willing, help, I would really appreciate it. Anything to help twist young minds. Absolutely. That's it. Absolutely. 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 Clive Barker podcast, connecting people. Yeah. <laughs> That's brilliant. The 300th That's brilliant. episode celebration. Yes. 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 Congratulations, you guys. Thank yes. you so Thank much. You. 10 years. Yeah. 10 years. Yeah. And, and Sorka, uh, I'm going to yeah. tell you to, uh, to, to run that again as soon as we have also Doug Bradley and uh, Peter Atkins on the episode. They're about to join sometime around now. Um, yeah. but, uh, yeah, that's, that's amazing. So, um, and, and Gary, you're in good company back there. Gary smart from, uh, dark titties and yeah. Lyoth documentary. Um, oh, you've been doing Gary, Gary smart. Yay. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Someone's <laughs> happy. <laughs> yeah. I've been telling Ed about your, uh, uh, bus that you've been developing through the pandemic year and you've been doing some really amazing stuff. You started with a Chenard, uh, Dr. Yeah. Chenard bus from Hellbound. And then it's like, I, that was a complete side of you. I had no idea. So how did that got started now? Have you been uh, sculpting for years or did, was this something you no. just decided to just pick up? I've always been interested in it. I think, you know, obviously lockdown, everybody was bored and I was working from home, obviously. Um, I wanted something to keep me occupied. We couldn't do a DT, we couldn't do a documentary. So I 
kind of one day, I think we had a gap in lockdown over the summer, and I went to Stuart Conran's house, and mm-hmm. we started talking about, um, obviously Stuart Conran, the makeup guy from Hellraiser, Hellbound, obviously same Private Ryan, Shaun of the Dead, and I started talking about my interest in sculpting, so he gave me kind of like a, a one-day kind of training session on how to sculpt and how to mould, and I went home and I did Chenard and I took it back to him and he helped me mould it. And then it kind of grew from there. It's been it's a nice hobby, really. It keeps your, your mind active. And no one's ever done a Chenard before. So I thought I'll do it. <laughs> Obviously, I love Ken as well. So it was kind of perfect kind of mix for me. That's brilliant. Uh, do you have any there to show off? No, I've got it. Oh, I'm really careful. I, hopefully you didn't catch it. I spun around in my chair earlier on. I fell off my chair. I don't uh-huh. think you caught it on camera. <laughs> oh. No, we didn't know. Yeah. yeah. So I've got a Chenard here, so it's the kind of first one I did, which was, um, I'm working on, this one's going to be a, a kind of life-size model of him. Uh, so I'm going to work on the costume at the moment, uh, getting his nipples ready and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, it's going to be a full-size uh, Ken Cran and Chenard, this one's going to be. Unfortunately, because obviously he has the tentacle on his head, I can't uh-huh. do that, it's just too big. It's going to, you know, I'd have to like, take half the house out, so... It's just this for now. But I've got a few of us in the other room, which obviously is the, Eric, the Frank amazing. Warhammer. Yeah. That's amazing. The detail oh, yeah. is incredible. It, yeah, it's I'm fabulous. really happy with it, yeah. yeah. But I've got kind of, I've got a cheat off Jeff Portis because in the movie, you never see the back of Chenard's head. And when you get the action figures and models, it's always literally the, the wires go straight round, you know, it's in kind of, you know, perfect round. I thought there's no way we could do that. And, you know, but it shouldn't be like that. So I spoke to Jeff and Jeff gave me kind of a little insight of what the head looks like at the back. And it's supposed to be like a, oh. the wires all going in and it's like a burnt kind of stamp where his skin's been kind of like molded nice. <laughs> and mounted yeah, together. Florida. So wow. technically that's the most yeah, screen cool. accurate back of Chenard's head you can get at the moment. Wow. I, think, so, I think Ed has uh, some questions to you about that because he's an effects artist. And uh, yeah. what, what were your questions, Ed? Gary, did Jeff Portas tell you that about the back of his head? Yeah, basically, yeah. I mean, I, I contacted Jeff. I'm quite close to Jeff as well. I said, you know, can you give me some insight in Chenard to make sure little details people haven't seen? So on the top of his head, you've got the Robocop kind of homage, which is a bullet hole in his head with a bullet like Robocop had. You've got some kind of burn marks of Freddy Krueger on his face as well. And obviously at the back of his head, where the wires go, go into him, it's not kind of like, you know, perfect, you know, kind of uh, symmetrical. It's literally a kind of load of flesh mounted to kind of... Any, to be honest, oh. it helps me when I'm molded for the head and put the wires in because you can just hide them under all this goo and flesh. Yeah, so that was a little kind of like tip from from uh, Jeff himself. That's awesome. You know, That's Jeff Fortas might be stopping by today too. Uh, actually, he was uh, he was uh, volunteering for a COVID vaccination site, so unfortunately, he's not. But he did give us a couple of uh, uh, recorded messages. One of them is about Nightbreed. He has the original uh, camp, uh, drawing of Baphomet that Clive did um, on set um, when they were filming it. And Ryan, do you think it's a yeah. good time to play that video yeah, now? Yeah, I'll share that right now. Coolness, let's do that. Let's maximize that Thank video. Thank you, Gary, for telling us about your sculpting. Yeah. No, no, no worries. Thank you. Thanks for asking. <laughs> let's see if we can uh, share that real quick. I let's, love hearing uh, about that project, Gary. Yeah. Oh, and thank you, you. You have an Instagram account with uh, um, um, all your busts. Oh, here we go. Yeah, how band busts. Here we go. Here's Jeff Portis on Baphomet. During pre-production for Nightbreed, Clive and I had many long discussions about the design for Baphomet, the god of the Nightbreed. We both came up with various designs, but we just couldn't seem to get in onto anything that would work, that seemed powerful seductive, incredible. One day, Clive came in at nine o'clock in the morning, just after he had his breakfast, and said, I've got it, I dreamt it. He asked for some sheets of paper. We provided him with four large A1 sheets of watercolor paper, which he put on the floor. A line of three, and one just below the middle, a T. And he drew this. This is the middle section, the main body and the head of Baphomet. On either side were his two arms in the crucifix position, and down below were his legs. He drew this. And this is what Baphomet became. Glowing pulsating light in the body and a large enigmatic face staring out at you. Wow. Awesome. He's very serious, wasn't he? Awesome. <laughs> Isn't that That's lovely? That's so beautiful. That is amazing. That was an awesome bit of recording there. Yeah, yeah, that, that was just That was a, really nice. An amazing clip. 
And so he hello to everybody who's just joined in as well. I see there's a lot of new faces here in the chat. Uh, this is our 300th episode spectacular. We got Bradley Gartz, one of our listeners. Hey, Bradley, how you doing? I think you're muted. Uh, yep. We have Mike Lloyd there as well. Go. Hi, Mike. We have Marcus, our team member, Marcus. Also, hey, Marcus. Hey, Marcus. Hey. Hey, Marcus. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> Pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, you're a big Happy Clyde Barker 300. collector. Yeah. <laughs> Happy 300th, yes. Hi, <laughs> Pete. Hey, Bobby. Oh, oh Pete, hey. Is here. The man is here. Hi, Pete. Good. How you doing? Hi, great. Good. The the bar 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 I haven't bar. registered who's here yet. My God. Everybody's here. Yeah. <laughs> it's a little blue, oh there's a little blue arrowy button and you can click along because there are how many people? 25 people here now. Wow. <laughs> Good God. Yeah, That's definitely the most people record. we've ever had on the podcast. <laughs> and here's Doug. Including Doug's just connecting to all of Oh, my gosh. Oh, there he is. If there oh. were two of me, there'd be a double decker. <laughs> Hi, Doug. How are you doing today? It's so nice to have you on the show. Good afternoon. Um, oh, it's nice to be here. Good Lord, look at all these people. Yeah. Uh, hello. <laughs> Mr. Atkins, good afternoon. Wow. Mr. Bamford, like good afternoon. Wild, good I afternoon. Wow. This is wild, guys. Uh, from <laughs> yeah. all the people today, I think uh, Doug is the only one who has not been on the podcast as a guest. Why the but, fuck uh, not? <laughs> Hi, we want dancers. Exactly. Why the fuck not? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we're gonna correct that that awful, awful mistake pretty soon, hopefully. Yeah. And uh, it's great to have you here. I can make myself available for you. Who's that smoking <laughs> pen or a cigar down there? Yes, we have Nicholas Vince, we have Simon Banford, uh, Ed Martinez from Cenobium, who we, who has interviewed you several times in the past. Of course, Ryan. Um, we have I bumped Stone. cigarettes off of you. <laughs> yeah. Oh, did you? Okay. Yeah. Were there Marlboro? No, he was smoking Dunhill. Dunhill. <laughs> there you go. Dunhills. We have Paul Kane as well with us. Uh, author Paul Kane. Hey, yes. Pete uh, Atkins. Yeah. <laughs> Atkins is here. And Barbie. So, so our Blyer Cenobite is here and Barbie's here. <laughs> oh, that's right. So, Hi. uh, <laughs> so what have you been up to doug uh, i know you have that youtube channel you've been reading some stuff there it started around december you were seeing you were uh, reading the um the christmas carol by dickens and uh edgar Allan poe christmas. yes yeah. yes oh. are you still uh, going to keep that going oh, i think so i think so i hope so we um, love it we love it That's and i think um things. I think I'm. I think I'm about to start another uh, audio book recording. Yeah. Um, uh, and um, is uh, Paul? Are, are we happening? Do you know anything? I don't okay. know. <laughs> no. I don't. Oh, what a tease! There was going to be an announcement. Cross. Close. We have an exclusive breaking news from the reef. <laughs> so all of that, and um, um, I don't know, you know, that's about it, just trucking along. Breaking um, news from the reef. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, the, we, we saw the, the, a, a logo for Hellware, right? Is that something that you're, you're able to tell us about? Um, I'll wait till it's happening. Okay. okay. Gotcha. That's fair. Um, and... Uh, so right now, uh, with, with the pandemic, uh, all these conventions have been, you know, uh, postponed indefinitely. And do you have any recent uh, scheduled appearances in any sort of convention, Doug? No, I haven't done a... The last convention I did was uh, Mad Monster Party in Charlotte, uh, February last year. Wow. Um, they, are, they are starting up again, and I am... I am booked for one at the end of May. Uh, um, uh, Dave Hagen at Monster Mania is, is doing an outdoor show in... Uh, oh, yeah, we uh, heard about that. Oaks, Pennsylvania, which is just west of Philadelphia. And I'm, I'm, to be honest, still slightly ambivalent about it. Um, uh, there are, I think, four, four states in... in the country at the moment whose numbers are, are entirely wrong for this kind of thing and uh 
Pennsylvania is one of them. Um, yeah. Uh, and I'm still slightly, slightly uh, ambivalent about the idea of, you know, being part of an event um, oh. designed to bring thousands of people together in one place at the same time. But, um, uh, you know, with, with uh, full agreements on safety processes and all of that, um, uh, I've said yes to it. So we'll see what happens between now and then, but that's, um, that's it at the moment. How, how would um, an outdoor event work? I mean, are they gonna have like marquees or something or? Um, what are the rains? <laughs> call me, text me, on, talk, text me on May the 24th and I'll let you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, apparently, we will all be in our oh, own individual that... pagodas. Sounds rather exotic. Oh, hello. hello, do we have a special guest coming in? <laughs> Hi, this is Joe from the Barker Cast. Who do we have joining our awesome 300 Spectacular? Hi, can you hear me? Uh, yes. Hey! Yeah. Hi, Chris! Good, good to see you. Hey everybody, Hi. it's Shuna Sassy herself, Chris McCorkindale. <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness. Good afternoon. <laughs> can you can you see me? Because I can't see you. I'm having uh, issues getting we in. We can see you. Yeah, we can see you. We see can you see you and hear you. Turn to Midian. Yeah. Midian. Very strange Midian. because I can't see anyone. Oh. oh, we need to figure that out. Um, can you see uh, maybe yourself? Oh, wait, no, wait, wait, wait. Here we go. I think. The joys of a live show, honey. I mean, I've, yeah. I mean, it's not like I don't attend Zoom meetings every day, but this one just behaves differently for some reason. No. So. Do you get Do you get any sort of message there? No. The mystery of Midian. <laughs> yes, I may, exactly. Look, I may disappear and I may just try to redo this. Sure. Again. So, you open a box out and come back in again. To get in? <laughs> what was that, Pete? What was that? I said, did you? Did did Chris open a box before she tried yeah. to come? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Problem. Might be a crossover, Pete. A multiverse. That's a crossing, crossing yeah. worlds. Absolutely. Well, I would say probably if you want, uh, if you want to try uh, getting out and coming back in, maybe that will fix it. Um, yeah. I dreamt her. Uh, Yes, you did, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> what, what's the little box that says view in the ah, right when you want? Oh, view? Oh, it's speaker view or gallery view. So you can see uh, either just when someone speaks, they will pop up uh, maximized, or you can just have everybody in a square, a little square, and you'll have a little grid of all the people on the on the show. So oh. we can play Hollywood Hellraiser Squares. Oh, I, <laughs> oh, I like the Hollywood Hellraiser Squares. It's so much better to yeah. do it in, in the gallery view, because then you can see everybody. Or the we just, have to, bunch. The we just bunch. have to figure out who's going to be Paul Lind. <laughs> oh my God, I was thinking oh, come the exact on, same I thing. think we know. <laughs> yeah. so far, um, bunch. Some people are just black squares. What does that mean? Sorry, I'm getting technical. Uh, there oh, are they, some, some have their cameras. They don't want off. to be seen. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, I, why not? <laughs> no, exactly. Because they don't want to be seen. <laughs> what are they doing? <laughs> Hey, Doug, you actually made the uh, audiobook for The Venus Complex by Barbie Wilde, and uh, I've listened to it. It's such an amazing performance. And um, do you guys want to talk a little bit about how that came about? It was with Encyclopocalypse, right? Oh. It was what? No, no that one. Uh, oh, that was that one no, that, wasn't for uh, Encyclopocalypse. Uh, no, never mind. Um, that was Morningstar for that one. I um, I I read Barbie's. Uh, <laughs> well, I I read it. Way, 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 way back. Come on. When she published it. That. And um and then I was I was reading it again actually. She is signed in. <laughs> hey Doug. Was that the sign in process? Because I don't know how willing <laughs> Okay, so that's gone. I'm sorry about that. I just, I just had a message on my screen. I've From never Cynthia seen well. anything. Well, no, that's not quite true, but I've never seen. What am I saying? No, it's uh, that's never happened in a podcast. Oh. You can me. Right. So this is Cynthia right. has been messaging us as well. I have to apologize oh, no. to Bradley Gartz. I am so sorry. I think I kicked you out because when I was trying to do the other oh. one, it, it, oh. all the names switched around and then I was I kicked him out. Okay. Paul, he's a good guy too. We actually met him. Paul okay. back. 
it's oh, it's man. behind us. It's behind uh, us. Let's man. go back. <laughs> it was certainly behind <laughs> Cynthia for a while there as well. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh, nice. oh. Let me oh. change the subject. Let me ask hey, a question. People have been yes. missed, I think. Ed, Ed, please go ahead and ask a question. Doug, have yes. you seen the NECA new Ultimate Pinhead figurine? I'm not sure. Okay, it's got legs. You know how that's under it? the skirt that he never had legs? Legs. No, that's oh. it's got that's two heads. Fun. It's got like four sets of hands. And it's got legs under the skirt. It's a new ultimate pinhead from NECA. I just thought you didn't know about it. Maybe I'd tell you about it. No, I think um, I, 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 I may have been faintly aware of it. I don't really recall these things. <laughs> um, but uh, um, no, pinhead does not have legs. We all know that. He just floats <laughs> and like. Exactly. exactly. Listen, can I just be really horrible and self-serving and 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 get back to. Doug's yes. wonderful story yes. about audiobook. So, well, I'll 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 just finish where I was up to before um um Cynthia um we're so rudely interrupted. Until she finishes. Uh, um, I, I was actually rereading it um and uh, aloud to Steph, which I frequently do while she's um, painting and um uh, um, uh, um discussed how easily uh, it came off the page. And um, so then we were at um, one of those conventions in the before times, mm -hmm. um, and uh, Barbie was at the next table to me. And at some point, I sidled over to her and I said, "You know that the dirty book what you wrote? <laughs> don't you think it? Ought be, don't you think it ought to be an audio book, my dear?" And she said, "What a lovely idea!" Over to you, Barbie. Yes, and then well, I mean, you know, I think it was a. a Steph said, oh, Doug was reading it to me. And I said, that's something I'd love to hear. And <laughs> we, we discussed it. And he does have the most gorgeous vocal tones. And um, so we, we discussed it and um, went into it, talked to my publisher. She said, sure, let's do it. Uh, Comet Press now called Red Room Press. And uh, over a course of a few months, Doug recorded it in his um, studio. What, what were you going to call it? The, the, you had to unplug the freezer or something when you... Oh, I, well, yes, I do. I have to unplug the fridge when I start recording um, down in the basement because it gets a bit noisy and I, you know, um, it's, a, it's, it's, it's a good place for, for recording. I, the, the acoustics are pretty good, but it certainly is not soundproof. Mm -hmm. um, so I said, Barbie, if I, if I started a production company for all this malarkey, I'd call it um, Unplug the Fridge Productions. <laughs> but I have, but it doesn't exist. <laughs> That's wonderful. That's great. Yeah. And anyway, like I, I was talking about before how delightful it was working with you again, and how we had, you know, a little sort of discussions about um, uh, pronunciation. And you said quesadillas, and I said ques no. What, what did quesadillas? Quesadillas or quesadillas or something. And, I remember. Um, I remember kielbasa being being an issue. Yes. I think, I think that, that's certainly pronounced differently in Pittsburgh. Um, because uh, um, Steph, who's partly of, of Serbian descent, big Serbian, Polish, Hungarian populations in Pittsburgh. So yeah. uh, very familiar with kielbasa, but they, they pronounce it differently, evidently, from um, your ne neck of upstate New York, where upstate the book was set. New York. Yeah, exactly. No, but it was it was enormous fun, and we used to just sit and listen to these these segments coming in, these chapters or entries, and you know it, it was just it, it really made the book come alive in a brilliant way. And um, we we changed it we changed it slightly too from 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 the book because I I did say to Bob, you know, that there is an issue in that. Um, uh, oh Jesus Christ! Uh, forgive me, Bobby. I've forgotten the guy's name. Um, Michael Friday. Yeah. Michael, yes. Um, yes. Is very <laughs> what was his in, name? In, in, the, in the book. And uh, I sent a couple of tests to Barbie um, of kind of straight English, slightly transatlanticized English, <laughs> and he attempting to be American. Um, and uh, Barbie quite rightly thought it was better in English. So 
wrote Michael a backstory in which he was um, uh, born and raised, not, no, not was born in America, right? But then spent formative years in England until he was a teenager and then came back to America. Didn't, didn't I, isn't this terrible? You know, not having read my own book, <laughs> I should I know this. Which didn't actually I worked quite well because it kind of gave him an outsider's view on America as well as being yeah. part of America. Didn't I choose I that you you should have been raised? That Michael was raised in Newport Pagnell, or someplace? It wasn't, no, it wasn't. Oh God, it wasn't Newport Pagnell. It's what's the name of the place? It's um, it's a hideous little hellhole. It's I, I, and my apologies to anyone who lives there. I'm sure it's wonderful. <laughs> um, uh, it's just north of the M25. If you go up the Great Cambridge Road and you cross the M25, it's the first place you come to. Isn't that terrible? Yeah. I can't remember. Yeah. But it's it's the second most boring town in the England to to Slough. I had I had the worst night of my life in Slough, and, oh, no. and uh, I, I won't go into it. It was hideous. Um, but um, no, it wasn't. It wasn't that bad. It was it's not the humans now. Sorry, John Betty. Come, lovely bombs, and fall on Slough. It is not fit for humans now, John. <laughs> <laughs> Doug, there isn't space Doug, to grow to... Doug isn't may I just say to... that I really appreciate you're doing the Great. audio books oh. and doing the, the YouTube channel and stuff because I am blind now and as I told Barbie audio books are my life and podcasting and stuff now you know this is Ed Martinez from Synobium I am now yeah. blind well, and so well, it really means a lot. I wouldn't have known that if you didn't have your name tag in the bottom in, in, in your in the bottom left hand corner of, of, of your box. But yeah. yes. So thank you. I want to Right. Okay. You. Well, I, I I'm aware that it's a, you know uh, how important this this is to blind people. But Dali, Steph was just playing me the other day, um uh, she, uh, a clip of someone reading an audio book and was was quizzing me to identify who was reading it, which I was unable to do. It was um, Ed Kemper. The yes. Killer, uh, Did I who, tell you, Doug, that my brother met Ed Kemper? Right. He, he that, now records audio books specifically for the blind from prison. He's a notorious murderer, by the way. And it was Potter's Bar, Doug, sorry. Potter's Just... Bar, yes, Potter's Bar. Potter's Bar, no better than it should be, really. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> another another memory from the years of doing the podcast is I remember Barbie. You have a fascination with serial killers, and you like to know everything about you know serial killers. Have you been watching any of those Netflix uh, shows now about true uh, crime? Yeah, I, true I, crime. I saw Manhunt, the hunt for the Unabomber, because that mm -hmm. was kind of happening when I was living in the states, and it was kind of whoa, that was weird. And I also saw Manhunter, which is based on uh, the book, which I think I read. <laughs> as well that was i've only seen one series of that though um which was excellent I, I have it's weird because i haven't really watched a lot of these things i really want to see the documentary about the cecil hotel mm -hmm. i've seen that yeah it's really interesting yeah the, yeah. the death of that uh, girl who uh, checked in and then unfortunately was found uh, on the water tank of the hotel several In weeks California, later yeah yeah that yeah was terrible. But, but the, the, the interesting thing, well, not the interesting thing, but Ed Ramirez, who was the um, Night Stalker murderer, uh, I haven't seen that one, but he actually stayed there and he used to just take his bloodstained clothes off, throw them in and then just walk up the stairs in his underpants, still covered yeah. with blood. And people would meet him and not say anything. It was that bad a hotel. Yeah, wow. it was. <laughs> Um, and and we've, we were talking about audiobooks, and uh, of course, some of our guests here are authors like Paul Kane and Nicholas Vince. Nicholas, are you yeah, working on any didn't, sort of stories right now? Because uh, we've had Nick. What what's that, Ed? I said also Pete didn't uh, didn't of course uh, Doug read Morningstar. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah I just absolutely. But let's, I just listened you know, to that a couple of months ago. Yeah, it was amazing. But I was saying, I was asking Nick. Let's. Uh, oh wait, Nick's gone. Nick just left a minute ago. Yeah. If you if you look yeah. in the comments, he just left. Okay, all right, that's He's fine. He's got a great podcast um, too. No, that was great. He said, "Hi everyone, <laughs> was, this was has been fun." The <laughs> I don't think so. I think yeah, he was I looking. I wish I could 
catch up but have another meeting to go to stay safe and well so he doesn't get to plug his books yeah oh. yeah well yeah i was going <laughs> to ask him about other people's darkness and uh, what monsters do but are you working on any any new stories barbie right now he'll have to um, go on the podcast yeah. I, I am i'm working on two different projects um but uh one i can't really talk about but it's it's going to be very different than anything I've done before, but it's sort of based on something I've written. Mm -hmm. And but the, I'm, I've been asked to write another story, which is which is it's called uh, based on Dante's Inferno. Ooh. Oh, and yeah, and I've been given lust, which you think because you know I've I've done a lot of um, uh, a lot of my stories just turn into to erotica, but I don't set out to do that. So I've actually found this one really fucking difficult. Oh no, it's got to be about lust. And then I, I, I thought, well, I've got this sort of fragment of a story about a time traveling dominatrix who goes back to visit Jack the Ripper. And um, that might work. Whoa. Excellent. <laughs> that is pretty cool. Uh, Chris See, McCorkendale, you... unfortunately, is having some uh, issues. Oh. Can you hear us? Can you see I can us? I hear you. I just can't see you, and I can't okay. see myself. Well, it's oh, like a man. regular podcast for you. We, we can see you perfectly. We can see yeah. you perfectly. Um, oh, oh, you, you know. know what? The, the, you have to hit the, this is something I've learned because I'm not very good at Zoom. You have to hit connect with video as you come into the meeting. I I did that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I did that first thing. So, oh. uh, Chris, what are you what are you doing right now? I think you're doing a master's degree, right? In I sustainability. Am. Do you want to yeah. talk um, a little bit about that? Sure. I, I'm at UMass Amherst, which is in Massachusetts. And uh, for some crazy reason, they accepted in, me into their master's degree program. Um, it's a master's of science program. And I have to tell you, I really sucked at science in school. So it's like, why am I doing this? But um, this particular uh, degree is focused on sustainability. Um, because I prefer to focus on possible solutions rather than measuring how bad things really are. Yeah. <laughs> so, That's great. So mm -hmm. yeah, I, um, you know, I mean, so far a lot of my courses have, have been around historical issues of environmental justice and social justice problems with our, our supply chains. So um, I'm, I'm, which is all very depressing and eye-opening, um, but it's, it's good information to have. Um, and next semester, I'm just, I'm hoping to do some really practical, more technical courses, like learning how to measure uh, greenhouse gas emissions, um, learning how to, you know, like spatial analysis and you know using data analysis tools um, GIS which is a, a, a graphical a geographical interface uh, software so very intimidating but practical if I want to get any any work after this so yeah that's that's what I'm up to I think that's what we need for the future yeah so now well, this is not just a hellbound reunion it's a nightbreed reunion because we have lylesburg the boss the and we have shuna sassy <laughs> yeah. And yeah and i wish i could see you guys i i you know i've only met barbie once and i just adore her and i would love to meet I, can, I can see them all perfectly well chris trust me you're better off where you are <laughs> 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 uh, what about all always the charmer <laughs> And we got Buttonface here too. We got Dr. Decker joining us. <laughs> oh, Dr. Decker. Yeah, if you could see him, there's someone wearing a mask right now. That's Ed. Yeah. Um, Ed were you guys on set together, Doug and, 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 and Shuna? You were on set, right? During the that, baptism that scene. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't, I didn't have any scenes with, with Dr. Decker. Yeah. No. Nope. Right. Sorry. <laughs> Doug, <laughs> let me ask you to do a favor real quick. While you're okay. here, mm -hmm. would you please say, "This is Doug Bradley. You're listening to the Clyde Barker podcast," so we can oh. get a sound bite. Cool. Uh, okay. Um, <laughs> hi, this is Doug Bradley, and you're listening to the Clyde Barker podcast. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Thank Perfect. you. That's wonderful. Um, so, uh, do we have a trivia competition coming up, Brian, in a bit? 
Uh, yeah, yeah. For um, if anybody wants to participate. Um, uh, oh, we see Joe and Catalina from Little Spark Films. We have forgot to introduce them. Yeah. Hey, Joe yeah. and Catalina. How are you guys doing? Yeah. Hey. Hey, do you guys have sound over there? There you are. Hello. <laughs> you Hi. guys have been pretty busy making, uh, uh, you made a lot of uh, Hellraiser Lament videos. You made, uh, where you made like some spots for all the boxes from Pyramid Gallery. And you made <laughs> little vignettes and stuff like that. So that was really amazing. It's... Yeah, we have 13 of those oh, little sorry. episodes. Yeah. And you also worked with uh, with the crew at Juba Briggs when they had Ashley and Doug, right? Yeah. Um, uh, oh, okay. well, the, the production company that puts on Joe Bob Briggs is called uh, Not the Funeral Home. Uh, <laughs> Justin Martell and uh, John Brennan, they're uh, <laughs> trauma alumni, uh, students of Lloyd Kaufman. And uh, they hired us to do all the Hellraiser stuff because they, I guess they liked our Hellbound laments. All yeah. right. So That's great. That was, local that, was, that, was very, that was a very cool interview. It was a lot of fun. We, we snuck that one in just before the pandemic gripped us as well. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. Yep. That was a fun one. That was crazy. That took, uh, that took us all week to get set prepped just for cool. Hellraiser. A lot of fun. Yeah. Um, does anybody have any questions they would like to ask some of our guests? Does any of the listeners here have any questions? Please raise your hand. Is there someone here? Can you see them, Ryan? Yeah, yeah. Is, oh, yeah, okay. I'm, Paul, only, I'm not seeing that many people. Yeah, I think they're just coming in. And we got Marcus, of course, from our team, from the Barker Casting. Yeah. Marcus, hey, Marcus, how are you doing today? I'm doing all right. How are you doing? I see you got a lot of art around you. Do you have any Clyde Barker art over there in the walls? Uh, no, no, not in my bedroom. That's, that's out in the in the rest of the house. That's all your painting, right? Yes, yes. That's wonderful. And you've been with us for the Imaginer episodes. Seems like Paul Kane has already said that uh, he appreciated it, but he's leaving. So uh, yeah, that, that was great to have Paul here. Uh, I advise everybody to go read the Hellraiser's book, which is on Amazon, where there's chock full of interviews with uh, all the cast and crew and people from Hellraiser movies. That was, uh, that's a really interesting book. Unfortunately, the actual a... title, sorry, the title I think is called the Hell Hellraiser, their films and the, the films and the legacy. Well, this or... is the second book of those. Yeah, it yeah. oh, has right, a second book. Yeah. It's yeah. enormous. It's got no. interviews with Kevin Yeager, you know, all sorts of people uh, about bloodline and all that stuff. But, uh, but yeah, hey, Gary, you made that Leviathan documentary. Um, do you, so have you ever considered doing a Nightbreed documentary at some point? Hmm. One day, maybe. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it was such a long process doing Leviathan. I think, you know, it was our first one. So we learned a lot from it. Um, yeah. And obviously, it, it obviously had difficulty obviously getting Clive off at the time. Clive wasn't well. Um, so I think we kind of lost out and I had Clive in it to a degree as well. So it's one of those. It's just a long process. I mean, maybe one day. Yeah, yeah, that sounds terrific. I've been watching have... your documentary, man. It's great. Somebody thinks yeah. so. <laughs> yeah, it was wonderful. It was great fun to be involved in, with it and sort of, you know, see all everybody. You know, the, when we had that wonderful screening at the Cinema Museum yeah. in South Bank, someplace, um, which is a fantastic venue. It was just great seeing everybody again after all these years, the people you hadn't seen. Um, and, uh, you know, it was, it's, it was a brilliant effort and, you know, congrats again on it. It was a, wonderful. And may I say that that part about Simon Says, his segment, mm. thank God for Simon Says. This button yeah. face is Simon Says' work as well. Yeah, yeah, it is. And he also did the makeup for Pelican. Um, yes. Yeah, absolutely. We had him on the show, unfortunately. He passed away some time ago, but it was a wonderful episode and I, I advise everybody to go check it out. It's another one of our memories and I was glad that we could have him on the episode at the yeah. time. It and the Leviathan beautiful. documentary has a great segment about the box and Simon. Oh yeah, he explains all the little panels and all the hidden stuff in the panels. That was- uh... I had no idea. Right? Yeah. yeah. Like that. I just, it was extraordinary, his explanation. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah I dedicate my appearance today to Simon Sace. <laughs> uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, let's see. And what else do we have here? Do, should we start a little trivia competition or do you want to wait a little bit more, Ryan? 
Can I just ask? I haven't yeah, actually ahead. spoken to Simon in a long time. I was just wondering how are you doing? And I was you... about to ask about Simon too, Barbie. Yeah. I miss <laughs> you all. <laughs> I wish you could see us. We can see you. You're looking fabulous. I, thank you. I well, I did make an effort this morning. <laughs> Not my <laughs> usual pandemic appearance. <laughs> But um, I, I can see I can see wh whoever is speaking in a tiny tiny window, so it's better than nothing. So I can see you right now, Barbie, Barbie, because you're you're speaking. Oh, this great! Is really okay. odd situation. Face? Can you see me now? No, I can see Barbie. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, I'm well, taking over the horizontal. No, Jose. I see Jose. So. Hey. So Chris, we'll be able to push this, put this up as a podcast and as a video on our YouTube channel, and we'll send you a link right afterwards, and you'll be able to see everybody. Okay? Yeah. Wonderful. Wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, Simon, what, you what you doing? You, Hi, Simon. How you doing? I'm just sitting in the greenhouse. No, I'm in our conservatory. It looks <laughs> lovely. Simon. <laughs> Hi, Chris. How you doing? Okay. How are you? I'm good. <laughs> How have been doing those dark ditties. With How are the nipples, Simon? <laughs> well, they're good. Ooh. They're good. Now, I thought of a good trivia question. How many bird's heads are on Simon's necklace? Oh, Ooh, that's that's a hard one. one oh. Are you asking me? Three, four, five, six, seven, yeah. eight, ten? Ten? There you go. All that's right. ten. That's cool. I don't know. I don't know if that's right. I'm yeah. guessing they okay. were about that big. I wanted to it's find a, out how many dreadlocks Pelican had. It's lost to the ages now. You know, yeah. you, you you get them if you get a little model of Pelican. I think there's plenty of garage kits about that. That I think people have taken uh, uh, creative liberty with uh, artistic liberties. But I uh, have one. It's got seven yeah. dreadlocks. There you go. That's probably it. You know. Um, so let's see. Um, uh, Ryan, do you have any questions? Uh, no, no. Um, I guess what, what we do need is, uh, for anybody that wants to be in the trivia contest, uh, for the, this second hour here, uh, let us know, um, so that we can, we can set this thing up. Yeah. Talk in the chat and let us know if you want to be yeah. part of that, uh, for our listeners. And, uh, we have for first prize, we have an Imaginer book. Um, uh, I think it's number five or six. Yep. It's right here. Imaginer five. There Ooh. you go. And we also have for second prize one of our T-shirts. That let me see if can you show the models that we have. Yeah. So our T-shirts. We'll have to share the screen real quick. Yeah. And I turned off uh, screen sharing for other participants yeah. for obvious reasons. I have and another question for our Shona Sasi. Mm -hmm. So these are our our T-shirts that we have. Uh, so you can see the Cenobium one that's uh, that's been we had somebody uh, Mike was talking about that in the chat. We we do still have that available, and you can pick one of these T-shirts as as uh, as our second prize in the if you if you win in the contest. Yeah, and that beautiful and they're pin also art. available to buy too. Yeah, and that beautiful Hell Priest art right there in the center that was painted by Marcus Williams, our yeah. team member who's also in the chat. Thank you, Marcus. I I own the piece of art, so yes, I'm putting yes. it on my wall. <laughs> It's wonderful. All right. Um, I have a question for Shona Sasi. Go, go ahead. Please tell us a little bit about the makeup process. How long did it take you to get oh. into that quill suit? Good question. <laughs> Good question. Um, I would, I, it started off being maybe over eight hours. And then, you know, we sort of, we kept trying to shorten the process as the, the days or the nights went on, um, but I don't think we ever did it in less in less than eight seven hours or so. Mm. Um, and it usually started around four in the morning. Um, I'm not an early bird. Anyone who knows me knows that about me. So um, you know, I was trying to nap or meditate in the chair. Um, you know, at the start of it, and that, but as soon as the the headpiece went on that was it I couldn't even lean back oh so, wow yeah yeah it was it was painful and I don't like sitting still so Did they build uh, you some sort of a slant board or something so you could relax at some point no once the no because there was just so much detail work 
just incredible detail work. Um, how many people were working on you at one time? Like four? One it, on each arm? it was mainly Mark. He had an assistant, but it was mostly Mark. Mark Coulier. Mark Coulier. And was that a feat guy. that they put on you or was that appliances? So it was a combination of, um, of a, a late, kind of a latex suit, but I think, I, I, I think he, you know, I stepped into part of it, but it was also sort of painted on. Mm -hmm. And the face, the headpiece was um, pre, it was from a, a mold and it would be placed on my head um, in different sections and then glued on. And then he would do more, add more makeup and quills on top of that. It, what were the it quills was very I heard they were tubing. Tubing. Probably. Yeah, I, I don't know exactly what they were made of. I mean, this was a long time ago. Yeah. And, <laughs> yeah. I, I was, you know, for the whole thing, I, you know, I'd maybe had four hours, three, four hours of sleep before getting into that makeup chair. I think we'll be for asking so many questions. I'm an effects artist <laughs> myself before I yeah. went blind. I that's, think we'll we'll be able to get Mark Coulier at some point. We'll we'll reach out to him and see if we can get him on the show, yeah. because that would be tremendous. I know Jeff Portis is going to be coming in pretty soon. Uh, he wasn't able to be here, but he also recorded a, an answer for one of our trivia questions, which was how many pins are on Pinhead's face, and we will play that uh, if we have enough people to do the trivia. We do, yeah, we've got yeah. plenty. So Thank yeah. you for yeah. for telling me about that. It was probably appliances in a cowl, stuff like that. But we'll try to get Mark Coulier and ask him all those juicy questions about. Well, thank you so much, Ms. Shunasasi. <laughs> You're very welcome. Is is Mark coming today? Uh, no, we did not reach out to him for this episode, but we will try to reach out for him yeah. for a future episode, maybe in the summer. Do. Yeah, yeah, that sounds Mark, amazing. Uh, Mark He's a also, great guy. Mark, is... Mark also did Lyosberg's makeup. Um, oh, it was it was one of which I think is an absolutely wonderful makeup. He's he's brilliant. I, I mean, it was you can imagine. I mean, Barbie, um, um, Simon, and and Chris will will remember this. Pete as well to some extent. I think there were there were mornings there at Pinewood which were complete and utter chaos because there were you know in in the in the normal run of events trying to get a couple of actors into special effects makeup is is complicated we had mornings where what i mean there were probably seven or eight serious makeups going on simultaneously yeah uh, and it was it was generally chaos around there in the in the special effects uh, mm. uh makeup they, department. they the had almost 300 monsters i think at the time it made it to the guinness world record something like mm -hmm. that there were days yeah. where they were just putting people in and like pulling them out of the crew and saying, let's slap something on you. You'll be in the background here and there. And, you know, that's why sometimes some appliances appear in more than one creature in the back. Mm. Uh, so, yeah, I can imagine that was uh, pretty wild. Once we have Jeff, he'll be able to tell us more about that in the show. That, By the uh, way, Doug, did you happen to know that who owns your necklace prop, the original Lylesburg necklace prop? <laughs> The Lylesburg, the the necklace prop, the key of Midian. Oh, right. Yeah. No, I, I have no idea. It Do is me. <laughs> I own it. <laughs> oh, I am the one. Yes, I, I purchased it from the prop store. I think it was the prop store London. And I do have it. It's uh, reached out to Julian Perry and he said, yeah, you know, that might be it. We might have had more than one, but that might be the hero one. And it's really just a piece of PVC tubing with lots of like sculpey yeah. put in it and then just <laughs> Painted green, which is just supposed to look good on camera, folks. Yeah. We've been trying to get back into video decades, and it's all your fault. We've been it's... searching for me. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> We've been locked out. It's been ridiculous. And the, the honestly, poor, the poor berserkers are, uh, are stuck there again. I need to go there and then feed them. I keep giving yeah. them water every day. Yeah. Yeah. Vince played a berserker. Uh, yes, Simon, right. you were you played a berserker, right? No, no. no. That was no, yeah. Nicholas Vince was yeah. a was a hand, Nicholas. I think, right? And he was and he ghost, was ghost. I think. Yeah, he was yeah, ghost. yeah. The white albino berserker. That's uh, yeah. that is amazing. Um, okay, well, let's see. Trivia. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, well so, thanks everybody that that uh, that came. Uh, if you want to stick around for the trivia contest, you can. Um, 
What is it? I mean, I know what what do you do? It's uh, we're doing it a, we're doing a Clive Barker trivia contest. Um, so the way kind of the way it works is we'll have uh, we'll do an easy question and then people type in you know type into the chat and whoever types first will get to answer it. And so we have a easy questions, intermediate, and hard questions. And then we'll tear your soul apart. Right. <laughs> Absolutely. Yep. Yep. And the person with the most points at the end is the first prize winner, and then second and third prize. Yes. And Can I just ask one more person a question? Yeah. I'm just wondering because Pete, how, you know how how are things? What what are you up to at the moment? Or can you say? Pete Atkins on is he, deck. Is he still here? He's oh, on yeah, the spot. Yeah, did you did you hear Barbie's question? I, I didn't. I'm I'm getting a lot of uh, you know screen freeze. People keep oh, dropping out. Okay. So I heard Bobby be kind enough to mention my name, and then it failed. <laughs> she said, "How are you doing? So How are you doing? doing? And what are you? What are you to? doing? Oh, yeah. thank God! I thought you were going to ask for that ten quid. You let me at Madame Jojo's thirty years ago. But <laughs> I'm still Jojo's. waiting. I, I'm like, and there's, there's interest on that, you know. <laughs> I, Fortunately, thanks to Brexit, you know, it's back down to 10 quid, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Anyway. I think Bobby owes you money now. That's yeah, right. <laughs> that was my secret plan. I am I, I'm 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 doing fine, darling. It's fantastic to see you and to see everybody. Um and like I want to make sure I say hello to people I've never met, Laurie and Joe and Catalina and Sorsha, all of whom I sort of know online, and Marcus. So, because the the rest of you I know well enough, but I want to. I just want to make sure I say hello to everybody. Be, I, and Nina, I haven't seen for thirty years either. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, it keeps freezing. So, so I don't know how. I don't know how effectively I can answer anybody's questions, but uh, I'm doing fine, Bob. Thank you. You look Good. lovely and ageless as ever. Oh, oh bless! Wow. Thank you, how sweetie. Sweet. No, not feeling very ageless, but. Uh... <laughs> Now we we must try to um, continue on, onwards sure. and upwards. Never give up. Never surrender. I um, agree. To gravity. Yeah. You... <laughs> never surrender to gravity. Glav yes. You right. have a, a trilogy called the Lovecraft Trilogy, and there's an ebook called Rumors about to come out. Is that right, Pete? Oh well, the, the e it, it's an ebook of Rumors of the Marvelous, which is mm -hmm. uh, a, an existing book. Yeah, I mean, it's, <laughs> like the ebook came out about three months ago, and it, it's a mere nine years after the hardcover and four years after the paperback. But it is now finally available as an ebook. So thank you for the opportunity to plug it. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> it's a collection of short stories. It was nominated for the British Fantasy <clears throat> Award, which is very flattering. Woohoo! Um, and uh, it's up there on Amazon now as an ebook. And the the Lovecraft trilogy, uh, Jose, um, it's a, that's actually a, a shared world anthology that was created by Steve Jones, okay. and has a, a bunch of us in. Um, I've got stories in volume one and volume three. They've got Mike Marshall Smith. They've got Kim Newman. Uh, they've got Brian Hodge, Reggie Oliver. A lot of um, a lot of very very good. Uh, Supernatural horror oh, speculative writers. Um, we, yeah, I mean, it, 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 it's, a, it's a great fun project. Yeah, but I don't want to take up everybody's time talking about a tangential thing, but yes, that, my, my most recent stories have appeared in, in that series. And and uh, not just not just so available at a bookstore near you. So yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we'll make sure to put hey. links. Links on uh, on our show notes for your books. And, oh, sure, I'll send it. And, yeah, and Doug is not the only one reading poetry and stories. You also are reading some uh, Rolling Darkness Review stories on your YouTube channel with your partner, Glenn Ishberg, from the Rolling Darkness Review. So I, I, I'm going to put a link to that as well because that- I YouTube highly recommend that. Gold. Those are awesome. It's really well, amazing. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thanks. Well- I just need to jump in and, and say goodbye to everyone. I've I've got an assignment due, so I've I've got to come. I've got to finish that before two thirty Eastern Perfect. time. I will dream of you. <laughs> but, uh, 
<laughs> thanks for coming on. It's it, it, sorry for all the chaos, but it, it, this uh, I don't know. Is, this was a, the biggest podcast we've ever done with the most amount of. You no, know, maybe but... we can have a practice session next time. I don't know if it's sure. Well, come what? back, come back again. We'd love to ask you more questions. Yes, yes, yeah. absolutely. Um, well, good luck with your assignment, and it's yeah. been so lovely to see you. <laughs> Thank again. you. It's lovely. To see we you. love you. We love you. And I look forward to seeing the recording. <laughs> yes. We'll send you that link. Is awesome. Yeah. Take care, everyone, and Bye. get your Bye. get your vaccine jab, and we're we're gonna get yeah. through this. I've got my Yay. second one already. Me too. Lady <laughs> good. Get the jab. I've been modernized, so yeah, yeah I'm all good. <laughs> I've, yes. I've been Pfizerated. Oh. You've been fully nice. Porcupine <laughs> lady is saying get jabbed. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Oh, yeah. good one. Good yeah. one, Ed. That was good. <laughs> and I already promised Keith some inappropriate but... hugs. Bye now. Bye. Bye. Take care. Bye. Take care. How wonderful. Thank you so much for being with us. And, and Doug, we hope to have you in the future because yeah. why the... Why the hell have you not been in the podcast? That's totally on us. We apologize you for that. You can answer that question, Jose. Yeah. So, so ultimately, we will be able to have you yeah. sometime around the summer, hopefully. And I'm looking forward to, uh, to chatting with you about uh, Nightbreed and Hellraiser and Wrong Turn and all those wonderful projects that you've been doing. Have you ever considered, are you considering writing another book like Behind the Mask of the Horror Actor at some point? Well, it crosses my mind from time to time that I ought not to be such a lazy bastard, but... Um, <laughs> <laughs> My, uh, it seems to be uh, an immovable object, you know. Um, it's partly, to be honest, um, a, a, a case of what shall I write about now, Mummy? Um, I'm going to write a book about the history of Hellraiser Pithead. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds you good. Do that. <laughs> you know, well, faithfully chronicled by an awful lot of other people, <laughs> and I've I've kind of done that already. Um, behind the mask of sacred monsters, as I called it when it was first published um that kind of fell into my lap and it you know i knew what i was doing with it i, I had the whole structure of it in my head before i started so um I, I, it's occurred to me from time to time but i'm i'm very clear in my own mind that i'm um i'm an actor who wrote a book which does not qualify you as a writer um you know if if, if i was a writer I'd be writing all the time and I would have written more books, but I'm not, I'm, I'm an actor. What wrote a book once, you know, but I, you know, I'm, I'm quietly proud that I've kept it in print for nodding on 25 years. So Heck of a yeah. reader too. It's, it's an amazing yeah. book. Um, I hope someday there might be an audio book of that. That would be tremendous. Yeah, I would love that. Well, and uh, Dr. Well, Sorka has a, has a question. It's been suggested from time to time people have said to me, um, you know, why on earth don't you do a podcast of your own book? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because it started as a lecture, right? It started so, as a lecture that you would give, like a little... Or, yes. Or do an audio book, an audio book of it. It's yeah, a wonderful please. book. More audio um, books. So uh, I, is, it is under consideration, but, you know, lazy bastard. Yeah. So is Sorka still with us? Sorka yeah, Nguyen yeah. from Clyde Barker Magic. Go ahead, Sorka. I think you had something you wanted to say. No, I just wanted to ask. I wanted to take advantage of the fact that I'm always writing, but not necessarily. Uh, I'm doing it in an isolated experience, I guess, like all of us at the moment. But I was going to ask, you know, um, our our Cenobites and all of our, you know, uh, community here who seem to be very um, infinitely knowledgeable about this. Um, I'm currently writing a book. I'm at the beginning of the process at the moment, writing a, a large history of, um, of 80s horror. And... Um, uh, it'll be quite long, quite lengthy, but I was hoping I could consult greater minds than my own to talk to you about your experiences of it. So if you'd be open and welcoming to that experience, if we could uh, contact each other in the distant future, in the near future and distant future, if you'd be open to that, because there's nothing like the experience you guys have and the knowledge and you know, the craftsmanship. So if that's open, I know Pete and I have discussed that. I'm hoping maybe Doug might be open to that. I know Barbie hopefully be open to that as well. Um, and so I mean, Right. Yeah. But any of you, I think that'd be an amazing thing, but it only make it all the richer. So if you're happy with that, I'd be great. I can leave my information with the guys. So of course. But I have to say it's it's you've said it, you've requested it in such a charming way. 
to say greater <laughs> minds than yourself, you know, which I, is very ad adorable. So absolutely. Thank you. That's really kind. Thank you. Ryan, what should we do next? All right. Um, well, and and thanks for everybody that's that's joined us for, uh, for this part, and we can move it on into the uh, trivia contest. Should we ask Doug to read that question? What? What the question about Doug about Pinhead? Sure, Let's sure. So, it. who wants to play the trivia? Uh, let's. Uh, so the prizes are the first prize is an Imaginer book. And then the second prize is one of our t-shirts that Ryan already showed the models. You can give us what model you want and what size. And then the last prize is a best Cutler gallery poster of a Clive Barker exhibit. <laughs> and uh, let's see, can we show that one? Can you show the poster, Ryan? Or should I do that? Can I share my screen? Uh, just to second. Let here. me go away and do that real quickly. I, uh, I'm just thinking I since it. we got Doug here, maybe he would read the question. Well, we, oh. it might be a while before we get to that question. <laughs> We, uh, we do have uh, start the start with easy and then let's see. And let me go ahead and well, see if I can share my screen. Up? <laughs> uh, I'm seeing your screen right now. Yeah, isn't this what we were sharing was the t -shirt? Yes, yes. And do you have the poster from the Best Cuddler Gallery? Oh yeah, we can switch to that. Excellent. Just so people know what it is. Yeah. Okay, so I'll let you start off. So who wants to play? Everybody wants to play. <laughs> I mean, I, I some of you will think that this is pretty easy, but uh, <laughs> let's see. Oh, and here's the uh, best Cutler gallery poster. Let's see. Oh, there it is. It's a beautiful, yeah. beautiful poster. Oh, right? wow. It's gorgeous. Yeah. Okay. Um, so this is, uh, we ask you a question. Someone one in the chat and the first person. Uh, let's see. You're, you're kind of cutting out there for a second there, Jose. Oh, were I? I'm yeah, sorry about yeah. that. Someone else is trying to join. Um, someone special is trying to join, but they don't know how to call into the, the podcast. Uh, just give me a second here. Someone really important from LA is trying to join in, <laughs> which is kind of freaking me out a little bit. Let's see. Uh, all right. Can you go ahead and get something started, Ryan? While all I, right. While I um, so can people by dialing a telephone number? Yes, they yeah, they can. Do you know which number they should dial? Uh because we have uh dial by your location, and then there's Tacoma, Houston, San Jose, Chicago, New York, and Washington, DC. Let's see. I would probably say for someone in California, the, the San Jose to, to, number. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I would say this one. Let me just go ahead and type that into the other chat. I apologize for this, guys. Live live show and all. That's okay. Listen, just as a matter of interest, how long do you think the trivia section will last? Uh, an hour, we're you thinking, yeah. Ah, okay. You've got Can plenty I just... of time to make a pot of tea, Barbie. Don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, yeah, no, and, and, and you guys can hang around as long as you want if you it, sure it, yeah. okay no okay. i know that doug has another zoom calling us to get to yeah. so yeah I'll yeah be away about 15 or so yeah yeah that's why we were saying thank you so much for being with us and if you at any yeah. time you need to go uh we completely understand <laughs> yeah. i mean the trivia was more for the listeners so it's um the other people yeah. who are also in the chat Right. But this was an amazing, this was an amazing episode for everybody. I mean, it was the 300th episode. It's been almost 10 years and we're just so happy that we got to finally get everybody in a call like this. And uh, I think we'll have some really good interviews coming up with, with lots of interesting people in the future. Well, it's, it's, it was great being on your show twice. And this has been an absolutely adorable seeing everybody again. Thank you. Um, I should take a picture of the screen, but well, half the people have gone there. I should have done it earlier. But it's um, it's it's you guys are wonderful interviewers, and it's been delightful seeing all these faces. I probably, you know, I'll probably can I I'll just say goodbye when I need to go, and then okay. off. absolutely no problem whatsoever. Thank you for joining us, Barbie. That's okay. I mean, I'll stay on for another cup uh, fifteen or twenty minutes, like like Doug, because I, I wouldn't mind hearing these trivial questions. <laughs> You made it a real party. Okay, let's see. So who is, I think uh, Mike Floyd wants to be in, I think. Yeah. Okay, uh, so. Sorka but, and uh, Catalina and Joe. And I, I know uh, Josh, I had talked to on Reddit and, and um, Discord wanted to be in, but I don't see him 
in the list. Josh, are you here? Josh, Josh, paging Dr. Josh. <clears throat> yeah. so I maybe, don't see yeah. a Josh. Yeah, unfortunately, I don't see him. Okay, well, you want to start with the first question? Uh, yeah. Okay, so um, basically, in what the what Jose was explaining before, I don't know if he was cutting out for everybody, but he did a little bit for me. Uh, when uh, if you know the answer to this question, type a one in the chat really quick to everyone, and it'll, um, and then that way we can we can the person who who buzzed in first will be able to see you on the side. And uh, Eric says Godzilla. That no, that is not the right answer. <laughs> but, <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, so <clears throat> so you buzz yourself in by typing a one in the chat, and then uh, you'll get a chance to answer. And if you get it wrong, it'll go down to the next person. And we'll start with easy question, an easy sure. question, then we'll do an intermediate question, and then a hard question. Easy questions are worth one point. Uh, intermediate questions are worth three, and hard questions are worth five. And I worry that our hard questions might be too hard, but we'll we'll find out. I worry um, that your easy questions will be too hard. But <laughs> I just probably lost how you're we supposed to answer them. Yeah. So so it oh um so the the I'll call on the person who buzzed in and then they get a chance to answer. Okay, okay. so uh for our first one is an easy question. Uh Sweets to the Sweet was uh, popularized by what movie adaptation of a book Books of Blood story? Okay. We uh, have Sorka. Yeah, Sorka, go ahead. So the film's Kangaman based on the Forbidden. Yes. Yeah, that's right. So <laughs> you got one point. Uh, and, and let me let me just try to call someone real fast because okay. someone is trying to get into the the podcast. So let's okay. see if I can do this right. Just give me one second. Okay, you can mute. Okay, let me, that was the wrong number. I was calling Zoom. <laughs> it's someone from Los Angeles and it's really big. So let me just get this. Yeah. Uh, okay, I'm yeah. a little anxious about this, but let's go ahead and call. Two, five. So okay. would that mean we st still see them on here, the person? Well, if they're calling no. in, we'd probably just hear them. Okay, oh. let me see. Hello, Clive? Hello? Yeah. Hi, Clive. This is Joe from the Barker Cast. How are you doing today? Hello, man. How are you doing? <laughs> uh, this, is, this is good. I, I, I was trying to get through to you, and uh, the numbers weren't working, so that's cool. How are you guys? Oh, we're oh, super. Wow. Wow. Yeah, thank you. you. Uh, you're speaking to Jose and uh, Ryan, and then we also have here uh, 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 Peter Atkins, and uh, we have uh, Barbie Wild. We have Doug Bradley also with us today. Simon Banford, uh, uh, Marcus Williams, who is a big collector of your art. What? Yeah. Everybody's, everybody's here. Well, I'm glad to be able to join the party. Can everybody yeah. hear me? Yes. 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 From Synobium. Uh, We've got Ed from Synobium. We've got Dr. Sorka and Elaine. Um, they're saying yes. Unfortunately, I have headphones on, but I can, I can. I can, oh. uh, I can let them know. Um, can you translate for me uh, from the back here, Ian, can you? Absolutely, Clive. How are you yeah, doing absolutely. today? I'm doing very well. I mean, I should be at math, of course. That's a joke. Um, <laughs> um, but uh, no, I'm doing very well. I'm doing very well. How is everybody else? Good. Great. You're saying good. Great. Good. 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 Hang good. it in there. Does everybody <laughs> have their injections by now? Um, yes. Uh, Yes, they're saying yes. Uh, me too. Good. And Barbie said, "Hang in there." I've, I've, yeah, I've had mine now, so I've had my Johnson Johnson one jab, so I'm all good too. Oh, wonderful! Yay. Uh, yeah, we're all healthy people, right? Yes, we are all healthy. I'm people. double Moderna, Clive. <laughs> and uh, uh, I'm I'm working away crazily here. What, what's everybody else up to? Uh, Doug says he's a uh, uh, doubly moderned, so uh, he's also good. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, good, good, good. We all got the good stuff, yeah? Yeah, yeah we all got <laughs> yeah. the good stuff. Yeah, yeah. No, no third arms everybody, to report. Everybody's so. healthy, and everybody's healthy to as well. I got a little puppy at my feet here, Alfie, and uh, am I ever talking to parrots? So it's a good time. It's a good time. That's wonderful. Yeah. I, I yeah, really yeah. appreciate you taking the time to, to stop <laughs> by and just, we've been such yeah. big fans of your work. For uh, for as long as I, I you know, was a, a dedicated podcast to you, a, 
as long yeah. as I was a teenager and I started off and you really opened my view of the world and you really yeah, you're uh, making me feel you're making me feel really really old no, I'm, <laughs> um, um, I'm really uh, young I'm just, just like, yeah there you go there you go you, you started young well there's lots of stuff coming this end and I deliver two books next week yeah um, oh, um, to my oh wow and then another one the week after everybody's so, excited lots going on and uh and for the Brits over there, um, I'm going to be coming over to make I think, 10 shows in England next year. Oh, really? Uh, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm telling you this uh, on the down low. I shouldn't tell you anything <laughs> more than that. But <laughs> Oof. Oof. Yeah. Well, that well, everybody's so, very excited well, about that. We'll yeah, yeah, that I, I am too, because it's the first time I've been back to Britain to make anything you know, for, for we British actors and British directors and British cinematographers for a very, very long time. And the whole idea is to do it all British. Yes, yes, that's, really? that's fantastic. And also really, really hardcore horror. Wonderful. Wow. Yeah, 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 yeah. It'll be uh, the kind of thing to make sure that I never get on the royal list of of uh, knighthoods, you know. Um, <laughs> we've we'll actually got a show, we've got a show called Royal Blood, Royal which Blood. Uh, makes sure that I, I really do never get on the, on the list of knighthoods. Oh. That's my parrot yelling. Oh. She needs a <laughs> but I, I wish I could hear everybody, but I can't. Will you send my love to everybody? I will, everybody. Uh, Say major love from Barbie too. Barbie <laughs> says, "Stay safe," and everybody is like sending their love to you. Thank Barbie you so said. much, guys. And um, hopefully, we will be back. You know, doing the, the conventions, all those things. Perhaps by the end of this year. What do people say about that? Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, that would be amazing. Excited. Ryan yeah. says that would be amazing, and everybody's yeah. so yeah. excited about that because we've been stuck at home too long. Yeah, no, it's absolutely true. There's only so much you can do at home that isn't illegal. Yeah. Um, <laughs> General laughter. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Um, my love to everybody. Have a have a great Sunday, guys. And uh, thank you, we'll Brad. talk. Thank you. you. And thank you, Simon, for making this connection. Oh, thank That's you, Simon. Yeah. He's giving you a thumbs thank up. Thank you, Simon. And we also have here. Simon. Thumbs thumbs, toes, and anything else. Anything else. <laughs> Any appendage. <laughs> All appendages up. Right, Clive? I love it. I love it. Thank <laughs> you, my darling. All right, guys. Thank you so much. And uh, yeah. I hope bye to bye. talk to you again soon. Bye-bye. Thank you. Oh, well, you will, for sure. Oh, that's Take care, guys. Bye-bye. Yeah. Wow, you made bye. my day. Bye. All my life. Bye. Bye. Oh, that was wow. great. Hi, man. Hi. Hey. He's gone. <laughs> oh. Someone disappeared. Well, no, I'm here. I'm here. I'm just, I'm just saying thanks to him for coming. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and, and thanks to you, Simon, for, for yeah, helping thank us. Thank you, Simon. Oh, that Simon, was that was so special. That was brilliant. Yeah. And Doug and Clive on the same day, and Pete and all you guys. Amazing. Wow. Yeah. I had to take my hoodie off because I was getting so hot. <laughs> <laughs> wow. This, is, this has been a real treat today. The, 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 so, okay. Yeah, so, so far. Remember. Yes. Yeah. So, so far, Sorka got the first question right. So yeah, now we're we've got ask... an intermediate question. <laughs> okay. okay so, uh, well, that's a hard act to follow. Yeah. <laughs> Name the Hellraiser sequel where Pinhead decapitates a victim with a machete. Mm. Okay. okay. Hell world. Uh, so you can't yell out the answers. Okay, <laughs> Sorka. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Having a brain moment here i'm gonna say hellworld that's right oh my yeah. god <laughs> yeah. awesome so you got another uh three yeah you points, got a three three points uh, she's <laughs> taking all the prizes yeah yep, uh, yep. I um i don't know if anybody's muted there but you're missing out on the chat um okay so hard question now ryan hard question yes okay hard question uh name the short story where a turtle accidentally goes through apotheosis <laughs> I don't think I even know that. Oh, it's hard. Yeah, it's a, that's a hard one. All right, uh, did, um, I gotta check to see. Did anyone say? Nope, nobody's answering. <laughs> okay, so oh. the, the answer to that is is a uh, oh wait, apotheosis. You know where you get turned into an angel. Mm -hmm. oh. We have some big scholars here. Oh. <laughs> okay, it's a, the the story is called Pigeon and Teresa. Ah. Uh. 
Okay. That's uh, a hard one. <laughs> yeah. And another easy one. Another easy one yeah. here. Let's see. Another oh, easy one. You want to? Oh um, yeah, yeah. You can go ahead. We're supposed to be trading off, Jose. I. Yeah. Okay. Well, you want to go ahead? <laughs> you go got ahead. you. It's your fault for taking that phone call. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I just had to do it, man. I just yeah. had to do it. Um, okay. That's all your fault, Jose. <laughs> yeah, that's all my fault. Um, I will ask this question: Name the movie character that wants you to see flesh with a god's eyes. So type one in the chat if you know the answer. Ba, 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 ba. Is there anybody trying to play here? If not, we might do this at a later time. I mean, I you know, but or or we'll just give all the prizes to Sorka. <laughs> <laughs> Is it? It's it's a really easy one, guys. You know when. What so villain was, says, do you want to see flesh? Oh, okay, Sorka. there we go, Sorka. Sorka. Go I'm just ahead. going for a guess here. Is it Chanard? Which one? Uh, nope. Chanard. Is Dr. Nope. Chanard? Uh, nope. Next, uh -oh. uh, next up is Bradley Gartz. And by the way, thank you for so, so much for coming back when I accidentally kicked you out, Bradley. Uh, are you okay, there, Bradley? So You're muted. He just said Lord of Illusions. Oh, it is correct. It is Lord of Illusions, and the villain is Nyx. Okay, yep. so... Br Bradley gets uh, uh, one point. Yeah. Here we go. Now it's you, right? Easy one. <laughs> All right. Yep, I've got a, a shirt with a picture of, of him right now. Yeah, Nina was uh, put, showing off her Cenobium t shirt. And oh, you yeah. have it too. Yeah, that was Nina's sure, art. He did the artwork too, by the way. Yeah, that's a good that's old great. Cenobium. Yeah. Um, okay, uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm going to love you and I'm going to love sure. you and leave at this point. Thank you Thanks so much, so much Doug. For coming Hi, on. Doug. It was great to see Doug, you. Give us one more yeah. time, Barker. Yeah. Hey, you're I'm listening good. to the Cry Barker podcast. And this is <laughs> no, we got it. no, it's good. It's good. Thank it's good. you, Doug. All right. Take Wonderful. Care. Thank you Take so much. Care. Hope to catch you again soon. Sunday. Thank you. Bye, guys. Love, love, love to Steph. Bye. Thank you, Doug. You're the hell priest. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. So uh, this Books of Blood story was a kind of homage and sequel to a story by Edgar Allan Poe. This is an intermediate oh. question, but worth three points. Oh, boy. Okay, it looks like um, we, have, we, yeah, we don't have anyone buzzing in yet. Yeah. Uh, uh, Catalina, Catalina mm -hmm. raised her hand. Oh, okay, the they, did. they just did a whole bunch of them <laughs> there. Okay. Was first. All right, Catalina and Joe, Sorry, Catalina. you're on the same... Uh, you're on the same uh, same chat, right, Joe and Catalina? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay, yeah. Go, go ahead and give us the answer. New murders, new murders at the room ward. You got You're it. Correct. Yep. All right. Yeah. That's three points for Joe and Catalina. And Catalina, you've been doing the show on Instagram TV, huh? uh, Barker and Briefs, right? You want to talk a little bit What's about first? that just real quick? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> she reads well, uh, the books of blood. She reads short story by short story uh, from each. Uh, right, okay. Books of Blood uh, on and it's on IGTV. Oh, I'm sorry. Did did Mike Lloyd say something? Did you did you put the number up before Catalina? Well, sadly, Mike Lloyd actually was first according oh, yes. to my thing. Oh. I'm sorry, oh. Mike Lloyd was first. Okay, can so we do a redo on, on this well, question? Why did you guys share one and a half points with each other? Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> sorry about that. We'll do that. Let, let's I'll do a quick redo. I'll give you each two. Yes. Yeah, and I guess He's now we have complaining to complaining. He was first. No. <laughs> No, I'm sorry, we missed that. Give him three points. I have zero. Well, no, we're we're doing two and two. Sorry, okay. Mike. Um, yep. Yeah, it's just I, I saw that and I thought it was from the previous question, but I was wrong. And you and he wrote in the the name and everything on there. So yes. So now it's a hard question, right? For me, he says he should get ten points at least. <laughs> <laughs> now don't be greedy. Okay. So uh, the next hard question, Jose, can you read that one? Yes, absolutely. Um, so. This is really hard. Holy moly. In the novel Cold Heart Canyon, what was the name of the demon baby trapped in the devil's country? That's a really hard one. I know. Because, <laughs> you know, you know, Clive comes up with the weirdest oh. names. So, uh, Sorka, and then, uh, yeah, Sorka's first. Um, I'm not going to probably pronounce it properly, but Quadzephony, or yes, yeah. yep, that's it. How did, how did you get that? <laughs> oh my gosh! Because I love that novel; it's one of my favorites. So yeah. Hey, oh. Wow. <laughs> and don't oh worry, gosh. I would pronounce it the same way. Honestly, it's uh, it's really yeah. hard. There you go. So Sorka gets another uh, uh, five points. Yeah. Oh yes. Yeah. You keeping tag of that? 
Ping I right am. I, I need to fix this. And I, I guess we could, uh, how many more questions should we do? Okay. So next we've got an easy one. Uh, what book edited by Stephen Jones contains Clive's horror movie recommendations? <laughs> Sounds familiar. Uh, oh, yeah. oh. Was that was that Joe and Catalina that went first? It looks like Sorka. Oh, Sorka. Oh, Sorka. I don't know. Okay. okay. Oh, I, I don't think so, actually. I don't think no. it was that. No, uh, I think it was, it I think it was Bradley. Bradley. Didn't Bradley Bradley. Is it, is it, I think it's Bradley, right? Oh, okay. okay. I think it's Bradley. Not on my thing, but hey. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. Bradley, would, um, go ahead. Yes. A through That's Z right. of horror. He says A to Z of horror. So, you get... <laughs> Exactly. This book. Yeah. Didn't they do a TV series of that book? They did at the BBC. And, yes. And I remember watching it. And I can't remember if it was after or before Hellraiser, but it was it was brilliantly done. Yeah, it was afterwards, I think. Yeah. This, is, this book is from I remember for some reason the Ed Gein like 92 season. or 91, I think. Yeah. 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 Okay, now next up, that's uh, another. Okay. And now this time, type two in the chat. Okay, type two, so we don't mistake you for someone else. That's who a good idea. Yeah, the previous. yeah. Let's do that. Okay. okay. So, is it you? I no, don't it's me. Remember, it's me. Okay. Okay. <laughs> what is? Uh, so there are differences between the novella, The Hellbound Heart, and the movie Hellraiser. Uh, for one point, what is Larry's name in the novella? <laughs> Okay, that is Joe and Catalina mm -hmm. first. Uh, I believe his name is Rory. Yes. Ding, ding, oh, correct. Sorry. Ding, 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 ding. Correct. Another point for uh, Little Spark Films. Okay. By the this way, I have up. a question for Little Spark Films. Yeah, go ahead, Ed. What happened to all the props and stuff that you made, the torture pillar, the chains and all that? Did you guys keep all that stuff? Uh, I kept the chains and I used them all on uh, the Joe Bob Briggs episode for... Hellbound, Hellraiser uh -huh. 2. Uh, and we gave a lot of the props away in our Indiegogo. Oh. And our main prop was sent to Canada and uh, the, the guy lost it. Oh, <laughs> oh. no. Oh. Well, Bummer. but Paul's got his arm and then we've got this piece of flesh that uh, we pulled <laughs> okay. off of his arm. And this is also like the jar itself is a prop from that was supposedly holding uh, vinegar. That's one of the things that tortures uh, yes. Andy Brooks. Paul oh, Taylor. okay. Yeah, in the yeah. movie, uh, yeah, the torture film. Yeah. yeah that's cool. Paul Kane wrote. Um, right. Exactly. Yes, the Paul Kane wrote. Uh, well, I always let's... want to know what happens to the torture pillars and chains and props like that. Cool. Thank you. All right. So we have an I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna make a I'm gonna make a move, guys. Have a look okay. at evening. Thanks for coming, Simon. Thank it's, you. Yeah. So much, yeah. Simon. It's fine, Hi, it's Simon. Fine here in the UK. So Hi, Big Simon. Big hug, Thank Simon. You. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you. Big yes, hug. Thank you so much for making this happen as well. So oh, lovely okay. to see you. Hi. I'm hugging yeah. you. Yes, hi. <laughs> Big soon. Bye, Laurie. Yeah. Bye, sweetie. Okay. Bye, Sly. Bye. Bye. Uh, wonderful. All right. An intermediate question. The Barbarossa family comes from this novel. Mm. Oh, wow. Uh, Sorka right. was next. Godly. You got it. Yep. Yeah, that's three more points for the doctor. Wow. The doctor is in, huh, guys? Yeah. The doctor is in. Yeah. 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 All right. And now I dream about being said to me. Thank you. That's fantastic. <laughs> okay. Now type three in the chat for this one. Okay. Type three in the chat uh, yeah. so we don't get mistaken. And let's see. So Another be a hard, hard question this time. I'm asking the hard questions here. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Oof. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> I'll read this one. Listener challenge. Name the Clive Barker book that Jose, that's me, put off reading until we covered it on the podcast. So this is for <laughs> listeners. All that's an them. intermediate question. Actually. <laughs> oh, John, uh, Mar Marcus, Marcus, you've answered. Is it Absolute Midnight? It is absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> okay. It is the third volume right. of the Abarat that I've constantly been saying. You know, I'm going to wait until this is done, and then I'll read all the books. And it's yeah, like, it's just never, never finished. Yeah. But uh, it's, it's but now he so, has for the podcast. Marcus has five points. Three. That was an intermediate <laughs> oh, question, three, three. not a hard yeah. question. Okay, gotcha. You messed up. 
I messed up. <laughs> okay. That happens. We'll do we'll do a hard question this time. Uh, in Clive Barker's Jump Tribe, name the thief character. Mm. Thief character in Jump <laughs> Tribe. After Clive showing up today, there can be no messing up. <laughs> I, I don't think anybody knows this one. No. Uh, yeah. Let's, nope. You wanted to give okay. the answer? Yeah, it's it's a Kungu Na. Is his name. Yeah. Okay. So the little plushies that came out in the nineties, yeah. right? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Okay. <laughs> do you want to do an easy question next? Sure. Should we do another three or four questions and, and finish it? Uh, yeah. What do you guys want to do? I mean, we're. Are left? Uh, yeah. I mean, we're the ones doing the trivia. So let's just let's put in another five questions and then and then do a tally. And then okay. do the prize too. Right. Yeah. I guess we are getting close to uh, we are getting close to the end of the hour here. Okay. Yeah. So oh, I'm supposed to ask it an easy, uh, right? Yeah. Right. Yep. Okay. Um, okay. Easy question. Name one of the novels or short stories involving Harry the Moor. Oh. Okay. I know. I know. Okay. <laughs> All right. So who who did that? Was it was it the number four? Did, did you guys do it, Joe and Catalina? Okay, Eric Gross put in the four here. Oh, the you said Harry Day Moore, uh, the Last Illusion. There we go, Last Illusion. That's acceptable. We would have also taken Lost well, Souls. I think or, Eric was the one that punched in on the. Was it? No, he's no, he's got it. This is oh, very okay. confusing, okay. if you don't mind me saying, because I haven't been answering anything, you know. But it know. says. Uh, it says Joe and Catalina, and then somebody went three. John said three, and then it was Bradley one. Yeah. And then wow. Eric four. So it's it should, it should be very clear. You have to type in four, right? Yeah. I yeah. We were originally going to do it by up the number. I've been just up the number after right, every question. Right. Yeah. Four, and then we were going to do it by. We were going to do it by raising hands, and then we found out that depending on how you use Zoom, you may not have the option to raise your hand. It's okay. Really he, here. Here's a new idea. How about the first one to type the answer in the chat? You know, we we will uh, we will we'll give you the points. The correct answer in the chat. No, that, I think that would be a better idea. It's the, the, some of these are long answers. Okay, <laughs> okay. So okay. So next question, type five. Okay, five. Yeah, let's do five. <laughs> okay, type five in the chat to answer. Okay, we'll do an intermediate one. Oh, and please. well, so. Who got that last one? That was uh, Joe and and uh, Catalina. Catalina. <sighs> so that was. <laughs> okay, type <laughs> five in the chat. Five. Are you tallying the points, Ryan? Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, so we're doing uh, we're doing an easy question next. Uh, what Cenobite in Hellraiser is played by actor and author Nicholas Vince? <laughs> okay. Oh, oh, Sorka. Oh, fucker. <laughs> <laughs> Sorka uh, uh, answered five in the chat first. So go ahead, Sorka. Butterball. You are correct. You are absolutely know. correct. Wait, said, hold on. Wait, I said, no, no. I said Nicholas Vince. no. Oh, Nicholas Vince. Oh, yeah, let's, <laughs> let's, let's, <laughs> okay. Oh, hang next, on. Sorry. Next person is uh, Eric Gross. <laughs> Eric Gross. Okay. Oh. Go ahead, Eric. Are you there? Yeah, typed it. Oh. Yeah, got yeah, it. yeah. So, so answer the question. Oh, sorry. Chatter. Oh, yep. Okay. okay. So this time, <laughs> Sorka jumped a little bit, and it was it was Eric. So, uh, so apologies for the confusion. Uh, another three questions, and I think we'll be able to tally everything. Okay. I'm nervous. And now we're typing <laughs> six. Is Hard one. Sure. Yeah. Now type six in the chat for the next answer okay and then we will we will get the first one in That's so uh, it's, yeah we'll do uh we'll do a hard one in, yeah, in, six in and then enter i didn't hit enter oh, yeah, yeah oh. six and enter okay no. so this is a hard one in hellraiser how many pins are on the head of lead cenobite oh that's a good one i wish doug would have read that <laughs> oh john. john john go ahead john what is, what is the answer? <laughs> 42. 42. That's 42. the answer to life, the universe, and everything. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, um, Sorka is next. It Give is a your... guess, but I'm going to go with 75. 
No. Mm. Uh, no. Oh, hi, okay. hi, hi, Hugh. We got Hugh Ross just joined hi. us. Oh, hi there. How are you all? Hi, hi Hugh. Yeah, you just got us. Yeah, we're right here. We got everybody here. We got Pete Atkins. We got Barbie Wild from Hellraiser. We have all sorts of people here. Thank you so much for joining us for our 300th episode spectacular. Welcome, <laughs> welcome. Uh, so where are you late. calling us from? Are you from London or Glasgow? I'm in Brighton. Brighton, excellent. Ah. Yeah. I've had a, I've had um, a technological nightmare day with uh, crashes of my internet and blah blah. Oh, blah. Sorry oh. to hear that. Oh, sorry well, to hear I was on the phone to Apple and etc etc etc. Yeah, it's been hellish. Hello, mm -hmm. there's Barbie. Hi. <laughs> Hiya. You just I missed Carl. You. Yeah, you you just missed Doug and uh, Chris McCorkendale was here, but unfortunately they had to leave. Um, um, it was uh, they had other things to do. But they were and, here for uh, a long time. How how has it been working on uh, Outlander? It's been fine, but it, 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 within our family we call it bystander. I'm very much um, <laughs> at the moment a bystander. <laughs> um, <laughs> but um, it's very nice. They're lovely people, and um, they keep telling me how they. I don't know if you know, anybody who knows the books. The characters are supposed to develop. Mm -hmm. We're waiting, uh, but they're lovely people. Lovely people. It's good fun, and they pay nicely, and so on and so forth. So it's great. Wonderful. Yeah, you're Can't playing Arch, Arch Bug, right? That's right, Arch yeah. Bug. Yeah. Do you mind if I just ask? I know that Nick just wrapped doing an indie film and stuff. I mean, how are things working with the filming and stuff? Is everyone just vaccinated and you're tested every day, or what's the poop? I get, um, before I go up, they, they send somebody or I go somewhere to have a test. And then uh, I, there's a test every day on set before you start work. Right. And um, the people are in masks apart from when filming is happening. Um, and it's all very, very carefully kind of arranged. Um, and the, the, the film business seems to be handling it fairly well on the Good. whole. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, so, it, it, and I, I've also been vaccinated, I've now been um, fully Pfizer, as they say, <laughs> had both my, uh, my vaccinations, which is terrific. That's wonderful. Yeah. We actually just had Clive Barker join us by phone, and uh, he was no, also... really? Yes, yes, unfortunately, he was not here for long, but uh, he, he called in, and uh, he was, uh, he was very excited about the 300th episode, and told everybody to stay safe and vaccinated. He had his Johnson and Johnson one dose. And, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, unfortunately he was, he was just here for a couple of minutes and then he left, but uh, it's, it's so great to have you here and, and reminisce a little bit about having you on the podcast with Occupy Midian. And, and I, the, we're actually in the middle of a trivia right now. So we'll ask a few more questions of the trivia, but, but afterwards I would love to ask you a couple of questions if that's okay. Absolutely fine. Okay, so who's asking the next question, Ryan? So, well, we, we actually, let's do the answer for that one because we have it uh, oh, directly right. from the man who designed the, uh, who designed the, the pinhead. Yeah, so the, uh, the question so. in the trivia was how many, pins, pins how, how many pins were on Pinhead's makeup in oh. Hellraiser? And so we actually got Jeff Portis, the effects uh, artist, to record us a little video about that. Oh. stop that i don't know what might happen hi i'm jeff portis i designed and created pinhead for hellraiser so you want to know how many nails there are in the hell priest's head 104 did you get it right <laughs> they did uh, not <laughs> i'm kicking myself because i nearly typed in 101 i was oh, so close oh, yeah, that is close yeah. that's the one question i might have gotten right <laughs> or come closest to Close, but no cigar. Yeah, yes. and the, that yeah, number exactly. changed over time, right? But in the first movie, it was 100 and 106. Right. So a couple okay. more questions, Ryan, so until we wrap up the trivia. And tell yeah, you, the... you can do okay. the next uh, easy one. Okay, next easy one. And this time you will type six, uh, no, seven, seven in the chat, okay? Yeah, there type we go. Type seven in the chat, and the first person to type seven will be able to answer the question. And I'm going to ask an easy one. Mm. Let's see. Mm -hmm. An easy question. Um, what is Aaron Boone's name given to him by Baphomet the Baptizer? Seven in the chat. Okay, Joe and Catalina typed in seven. 
And uh, go ahead and answer that question, Joe. Ball. Yes, Cabal. Oh, Absolutely. Cool. And you get yeah. one more point. <laughs> All right. Okay. One more question. Okay, an intermediate yes. question now. Um, here. What is the address of the Cotton House in the first Hellraiser movie? Oh, so this one's eight on the chat. Eight on the chat. Yeah. Okay, Joe and Catalina. Okay, just wait, wait a minute. Just making sure. Is it so you type date? Okay, yes, go ahead. Uh, I don't remember the number. Uh, Lavitka Street, that's uh, the street. Ludovico. Yeah. I'm sorry, Ludovico. how do you pronounce it? Isn't it Ludovico Street? Ludovico. I've been pronouncing it wrong in my head all these years. It's, it's, uh, yeah, that, that's close enough. It's 55 Ludovico Street. 55, I said. 40. Yeah. So who gets Jesus. the points? So, so who gets the points, Barbie or Joe? <laughs> Joe and Catalina do. <laughs> okay. okay. That's fair. That's Sorry, fair. Barbie. Sorry, Barbie. <laughs> Barbie has a little bit of an unfair advantage on that one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I got one, it up. Should we ask yeah. for a, a, a yeah, last yeah, and question? thanks to thanks to Ed for that one. That was a good uh, Ed and Nina. That was a great question. Yes, absolutely. Should we ask a last one and then tally the points? Uh, yeah. Do you want to? Let's do a hard question. Okay, a hard question. The last question of the trivia. Type nine in the chat if you know the answer. Nine in the chat, and we will give you a chance to answer. So here's the hard hard question. Oh, I'm not okay. Gonna Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> this one comes from Phil and Sarah from uh, Clive Barker oh, Archive. Oh. Yeah, and, and uh, a revelation. So they offered a few questions. One of them was, who were the cover artists for the UK and US first editions of Weave World, respectively? This oh, is kind of hard. Uh, this is really hard. So once again, I'll repeat. Who were the artists for the UK and US first editions of Weave World? Yeah, that's a hard one. We, yeah. we didn't know this one either. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think someone's trying to grab the book and see if they can find out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Nope, that's cheating. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the, the answer is uh, Tim White and Wendell Miner, uh, Miner, respectively. Yes, Tim White, amazing artist. Oh, Tim right. White. Okay, so let's go ahead and tally those points, Ryan. See who's yeah. first, second, and third. I think I have a pretty good idea, but I'll do that. <laughs> Window Miner. Okay. I wish we could have had Doug read the question of how many pins does Pinhead have? That would yeah, awesome. that would have been terrific. Yes, yes. I got him to do a sound bite. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. We're gonna hey. put that. We're gonna put that how in the episodes. Pin, pinhead pin if a pinhead could pin heads. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Ryan is telling the points. Yeah. You got to get Barbie to do one too. Hey, I've got a question while you're tallying. Sure, go ahead. Okay, this is, it always in, in, interests me that when I, you know, sign, people give me pictures of the first lady Cenobite to sign. And I go, that I was actually only in the second one, but Grace Kirby. Ev everything is very different. Grace Kirby, yeah. of course, played her in the first one. Yes. And, and, and so what is, if anybody knows off the top of their head, what's the difference in the throat jewelry between female Cenobite one and female Cenobite two? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Does anybody know that question? The, in in the so far as the metal pieces, you mean? Hand on buzzers. Yeah. Uh, the ones that are holding open her vagina throat. Yes. Ooh. Those are different on, 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 uh, your, on your Cenobite than the first one? Yeah. <laughs> I think one of them has like arcs, like metal arcs that are oh. holding it open. I think the shape, right? Is it the shape is different? One's like rounded, okay. the other one's like more like square almost? No. No, to... uh, mine came down in a single thing because my neck was a heck of a lot shorter than Grace's. Yeah. In a single thing, hers was held open. It had it was like divided into three sections. Yeah, three oh. little wires. Yes, because she had a really long neck. Right. And so it was like two little things <clears throat> coming out. Something. So um, yeah, but that, it always amazes me. To me, it's just a startling difference between the. Um, but maybe people are looking at the vagina neck and not yes. the throat jewelry. I have a quick question while Ryan is telling for, for Hugh yeah. Ross. So Hugh, I've, I've, I've been friends with you on Facebook for so long and I see your posts on Instagram and all that stuff. 
And I just want to ask you, you seem like such a calm, collected, nice, kind person. How hard was it to inhabit Narcisse, who's so, so, so frantic, so out there? It's, it, um, it seems like a different person altogether. Well, yeah, it was, um, you know, it, uh, it, it was a great part to play because, I mean, we all kind of want to do that, kind of throw our hats over the windmill and be as, as <laughs> extreme as possible. Can I have my way with you? Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's it's uh, someone has a a Dr. Decker mask ad. He's a, he's saying, "Can I have my way with you?" Uh, not right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, and and um, no, it was and Clive, Clive had seen me. I, I've told this story, I think, on, on another um, chat somewhere. But um, Clive had seen me doing a pantomime, which is this English tradition we have. Barbie knows. Where um, you know, ever all the sexes are reversed and all that kind of thing, and I I played um, a Mother Goose, which is a, a, a wonderful drag part, oh. and um, it was over the top, and Clive liked that, and he thought, you know, uh, you know, all the Narcisse thing, you know, I'm an act, you see, and all that kind of stuff. Um, it was just the opportunity to kind of you know be extreme and and have a good time, and um, yeah. I've got a friend at the moment. She's she's playing a, a villainess, and she was saying to me, I was talking to her, you know, today, and she was saying, you know, you'd never think she was a villainess for a moment, but what what fun it is to play what you're not, really. Mm, right. yeah. yeah. You know, it's it's yeah. boring to be cast all the time as as whatever you might seem to be naturally, and it's much more fun to to have something a bit more extreme. Yeah, I've seen you as a Napoleon soldier in uh, 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 Sharp. I oh think. yeah, yeah, yeah. That was yeah, a bit yeah. of a job too. <laughs> yes. Yeah. That was that was really really cool. Ryan, do you have yeah. uh, who's the winner of the trivia? All right. So in first place, uh, uh, Sorka uh, got hey. first place. What a shocker! Yeah. Oh. Second place, oh, wow. uh, Joe and Catalina, yeah. and third place Yay. is Marcus. There you go. Yay. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you so much for everybody who participated in the trivia. Yeah. So uh, the first prize, again, it's an Imaginer book. Second yeah. prize is a T-shirt that you can pick the model. Just go, we'll tag the link on this so you can go to our store and, and tell us what uh, design you want and what's your size. Yeah. And then we'll mail it to you. And the third prize is a Best Cutler Gallery poster for Clive Barker exhibit that we showed earlier. So we'll yeah. put all that stuff in the show notes after that. Yeah, uh, and I, we'll, I actually, we'll contact uh, you. I actually already uh, own that poster, so if there's, <laughs> okay. if, there, if there's anyone listening who wants that poster, just Marcus, give it to them. Oh, well, uh, who's, next, who's person, the other? Ne next person was Mike Lloyd. Uh, there you go, Mike. You got a poster. And I think I think um, Joe and Catalina yeah. want to swap prizes. Oh, you oh. do? We'll take a poster. <laughs> yeah, you, yeah just, okay. just take the poster. That's fine. But if you want to take the shirt. <laughs> okay, oh, we're that's already... okay. We already gave that to, to Mike, though. Yeah. So I have a question yeah. for Hugh. Don't worry. Well, sorry, we're being complicated. Ignore us. Who has a question? For Hugh, yes. Okay. Get closer to the mic. May I ask? Um, a lot of the lines you used were really, you know, cool. Did you ad lib some of that, like sailors and stuff yeah, like that? Yeah, yeah, yes, I did. And and I was very happy. I mean, it was, yeah, I did. It was. I yeah. so. you, they were great. Thank you. <laughs> also. <laughs> With things like little personal things like chewing gum and stuff, was that your own touch? I think so. Yes, I think it probably was. And and I think maybe even the cigarettes were kind of my idea in the first place. The fact that it was keen on the cigarette. I love uh, that car you had. And did you get to keep any of the props, like those thumb knives, maybe? Uh, no, no. Um, the only thing I've got, I've still got the T-shirt. Oh, oh yeah. Cool. And I thought I thought maybe I'll when I'm really poor one day I'll put that out there and hope, hope somebody will pay a lot of money. <laughs> Should have worn it. Huh? Uh, it's, um, it's been duplicated and sold I think all over the place, but I, I still have the yes. original. Oh it a, wow! It was a yeah. King Rocker T-shirt, if I recall. King that, Rocker. That's right. That's yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, and uh, didn't uh, wash it, so it's got the original sweat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It does. Oh goodness. That's goodness. So important. You want and those epithelials. <laughs> I, don't know what, I don't know what happened to those. We'll slow you with it later. Wash them up. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, have, I Pete, Simon, have I missed Nick and Simon today? Uh, yeah, unfortunately, they were here for a while. They were here for about an hour, and then they had to go. Um, yeah, it would have it would have been amazing to. Uh, what to, a reunion! Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of and what about Russell? Russell Charrington been here today? 
Uh, no, unfortunately, he couldn't. Uh, there was a he, death in the family, and oh unfortunately, no. he canceled oh. at the last minute. So, but you uh, missed Clive. He told uh, me. Good yeah. Thing. yeah, yeah, Clive was here. Yeah, but um, nope, someone is not muting their computer. So, uh, yeah, this this has been an amazing episode, and uh, I want to thank everybody for for such a, a, a generous amount of time that you've been with us today. Um, d does anybody have any more questions for our guests? Yes, Q. Quick yes, question Ed. about the makeup. How long did it take them to do the prosthetics on your face? It, it took a long time. I, I, it was, I mean, extraordinary. He used, I used to be picked up from my place in central London about four o'clock in the morning. And then I'd get to Pinewood and then Neil, Neil Gordon, who's a genius, um, would do the makeup. And it used to take about two or three hours altogether. And I, I, used, to, I used to eventually learn how to go to sleep in the chair and I can remember then the music music being played and Neil just yeah. carrying on while I dozed quietly in the chair and came kind of woke into the came into the day. Were uh, you aware that they have masks now available? I think of you as well. There's a company called Trick or Treat Studios that has the license. Yeah. Really? Really? For the Narcisse uh, mask. I know uh, they have I, this one that I'm wearing as well as the Berserkers and um, I think Peliquin. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And uh, um, it was originally going to be like scaly green on your scalp, the part that's that you right, would tear right, out, right? right? Yeah, and then they decided to go with a more, you know, red. Yellow uh, and purple. Yes, yes. Yeah, are yeah, you right. are you currently working on any plays or any 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 uh, further uh, projects that you'd like to talk about? Me? Yes. No, I'm, I'm, I'm contracted to, um, and, and then there's, I mean. Non-disclosure? <laughs> Masses of disclosure and confidentiality stuff about it. I'm contracted on an outlander, at least for the end, until the end of this series and possibly the next. I'm not sure. Oh, well, please come news. back and tell us all about it when you can. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I will. I will. I mean, it's very big in America. Outlander is much bigger in America than it is in the UK, I think. Mm -hmm. um, That's right. And I, I suppose I should get up, up my, when it's finished, up my game about coming to conventions and things. I, I, the one I went to in uh, Indianapolis was such a good, good flop. I really enjoyed it. Oh yeah, they're fantastic. Fun. I've not been, I've not been very proactive about all that. I'm not. Like, Nick Vince has got it all sewn up, hasn't he, Barbie? <laughs> well, we actually shared the same manager, um, convention and and um, acting manager in LA. Yeah. Um, uh, Chris Rowe, and he got on this um, in 2014, and it's it has been brilliant. But of course, obviously, the last year has been yeah. is, is not possible. But um, no, it's it's great, and it's a good way of marketing my books. Yes, and, yes, um, because a lot of people don't realize I've written to um, a collection of short stories called Voice of the Damned, and which sadly is out of print. Um, now a collector's item, um, <laughs> uh, and. <laughs> And the Venus Complex, narrated by lovely Doug Bradley, Excellent. and now as an audiobook. Well, you missed so I'm just filling in Hugh because I haven't seen him for a while. It's so lovely yeah. to see you. It's been, I know. And, and I have to say, sadly, I'm going to have to go too. Um, but it's, it's but been a totally day. delightful. 300th episode. <laughs> yes, Ed. <laughs> Hi, this is Barbie Wilde, best known for playing the female son of Bidon. Hellbound Hellraiser 2, and you've been listening to the Clive Barker podcast. Oh, that's perfect. Thank, Thank you, you so much, Barbie. Thank you. That is, that is wonderful. <laughs> so, but no, I just want to send huge love to all of you. It's been utterly delightful seeing your little faces. I want you all to keep safe because this, can I swear? Sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah this fucking epidemic oh, yeah. is still out yeah. there. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, you know, please keep safe, all of you, and keep working and keeping doing wonderful things. And it's it's been I've been a bit low for the last couple of weeks, and this has really cheered me up seeing all your little faces and oh, and realizing wonderful. I've got a freaking story I have to finish. Hold and, on. Um, keep writing that great fucking work. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Said, keep writing. Keep writing. Keep, keep writing. Yes. Keep yeah. writing. Yes. Bob, tell Chris Rowe to to. Um, I said, keep writing uh -huh. that great fucking work. You must bring me to something with you somewhere. Okay. Okay. <laughs> oh, oh, oh there's so much yeah. fun to do at convention again. Yeah, yes, that would be awesome. We could be reunited somewhere. That'd it be would great. be lovely. Absolutely. Be yeah. 
Okay, Barbie. you guys. Do not sound bar, Barbie. Thank you, what? Barbie. Oh, <laughs> I don't know why I did that. I think was something possessed my brain, but no, that it's was great. The, Thank you. Yeah, it's that acting guy on the Simpsons. Hi, you may know me from. Troy McClure. Yes, Troy McClure. Uh, um, oh, one other thing I did yes. want to mention. Okay, before I poodle Bobby, off, Bobby, tell mm -hmm. tell Chris Rowe to get you out to Monster Palooza. Yeah. Oh, oh, I love Monster Palooza. Is that the one in Burbank? Yeah, yeah. because then we could have lunch. Come on. Oh, out. darling. I love Monster Palooza. Also. Listen, an obscure film that I did in the eighties called Grizzly Two. Yes. Total free. Yes. We brought George Clooney, Laura Dern, and Charlie Sorry, Sheen no. playing red shirts who get eaten by the bear in the first half an hour. <laughs> I, I went to Hungary and filmed this thing. My boyfriend at the time was going to play the musician in this band because it was this co concert in the park, and the bear is eating the concert goers. And <laughs> and he had to he was going to he had to go and and uh, produce Adamant in Sweden. He said, why don't you do it? And I said, I've never met, drummed anything in my life. He said, I can teach you in a day. So I, I learned how to be a mime drummer. And I actually <laughs> cornered the market in mime drummers for the year after I did the film. <laughs> Believe it or not. But so um, it's been remastered. It's been finished. Yeah. And it looks great. Grizzly too. So I, I buy it thinking, oh, wow, get to see me doing the rehearsal scene and all this sort of stuff. And they cut out. Oh, no. Most of it. You do see a brief glimpse of me. And then you see me playing in the drums in the, the distance. The actual band of the film, which is called Predator, they, they redubbed all the songs to different songs. I don't know why. And oh, so God. my drumming is completely right, out of track. Wow. Dude, what a shame. Yeah, but if you want Sorry, to see the bear so eating Charlie Sheen and George Clooney and Laura Dern before they were famous, <laughs> Grizzly Two is the one. It's, it's amazing that. See that. Yeah, it is on my bucket list. Yeah. Is it? Right. Why? No, no, I'm <laughs> Even the director never finished the movie, unfortunately, until much, much later. No, I think he had. Okay, this is really silly story, but I think he had a bit of a nervous breakdown or something because oh. the Hungarian government came in and seized the mechanical bear that they built oh. <laughs> for non-payment of Hungarian taxes or something. But he oh. came up to me once, uh, Laszlo, or I can't remember his name, and he was wearing this rather natty hat. And I said, oh, he, he said, Barbie, do you think this hat makes me look more like a director? <laughs> <laughs> you know... You know, if, if somebody yeah. asks you that question, you're in trouble. <laughs> <a great> director. <laughs> but also it has, the film has Louise Fletcher in it yeah. and Deborah Raffin Nurse being Raffin. a bear expert. And, and the guy, John Reese Davies, who was in the Indiana Jones film. I went to drama school with John Reese Davies. Oh, wow. Oh, mm. oh, oh did you? Oh, he was lovely, but he, the bear oh, wow. eats somebody. And he goes, this is a monster bear. This is a devil bear. Because he was doing a French Canadian accent. Now I'm Canadian, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and and he did it, he did a good, I mean, he's a wonderful actor, but he sort of was stabbing the bear with a big stake and uh, it's, oh. it's rented, I think. <laughs> the only. It's, it's out there. It's out there on Blu-ray now. So you can see Grizzly too in all its glory. <laughs> yeah, and if you blink, you'll miss my performance. But you know, I was out there for two weeks. <laughs> but anyway, that's the, the last these, little. These, these things happen. I, I did the same kind of thing in Hannibal Rising. I'm not even in it at all. Oh, okay. Oh, wow. You were in Hannibal Rising. I'm not wow. Even sure. in, the, in the deleted scenes, even, I'm not sure. But I had a nice little scene, but I was out there for ages. It's that so... was Ridley Scott or Tony Scott? These, these things happen. I Lisa. just love, I love your the dry performance in Train Spotting when the guy is doing the job interview and you're just <laughs> sitting there like looking very stern and confused, like who let this person in here? <laughs> well, I, I, I actually did end up on the, the cutting room form of a film called Burt Rigby, You're a Fool with Robert Lindsay. Oh, yeah. And it's directed by comedy legend Carl Reiner. Oh, and wow. I was. I was supposed to go there to be a Cindy Lauper lookalike. This is the 80s. I had red mm -hmm. hair. 
And um, I was talking to him and he was so adorable. And I said, I've got an idea. Why don't I just become this performance artist and I can do the robotic mime, right? And then I'll do it. It's, it we could call it woman as dessert and I could spray someone with whipped cream. <laughs> and, and Carl Weiner went, let's do it, kid. <laughs> And so I go to Barnsley in Yorkshire, Hugh, you, you, and yeah. I don't know, and there it's, it's a vaudeville or burlesque theater, whatever they call it, I can't remember what they call it in the UK. And musical. they have, a, a, yeah, musical. A, every musical, and they had the the, the Elvis Intersidator, and Bert Rigby, you know, Robert Lindsay was there, and they were the only people who made it into the movie. But I went up and did my robot, broke out of a garbage bag and sprayed a man with whipped cream. And, <laughs> And, um, but um, he, Carl Reiner did the man who balances plates on a stick. Do you know yeah. that uh -huh. fashion thing? Anyway, I, I get dressed, I go over and I say, it was such a pleasure working with you, Mr. Reiner. And he said, Barbie, you're a hoot. <laughs> oh. Carl Reiner thinks I'm a hoot. That's a nice story. It is right. one more thing though, sorry. Yeah, 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 go ahead. This other guy was coming <laughs> and he said, oh, you, uh, this guy from the crew said, you're going back with uh, her. And he went, you're going back with whipped cream, girl. <laughs> and, and Simon Drake, the magician, said, oh, yes, I am going back on the same train. He went, lucky man. <laughs> oh, there you go. It was a long time ago. Sadly. But anyway, that's the story. Sorry. Thank Rolling you. on. I'm leaving now. OK, Barbie. Bye, Barbie. Thank so you so much. Bye, Barbie. Love you. Bye, Love Barbie. 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 So Bye. Thank you so Bye. much for coming. Thank okay, you. how do I get out of this? I'm so sorry. What do I do? <laughs> Go well, left. this should be Go left. On, on the right side of your little window. There should be a red button that says leave. Leave. Yeah. And you'll be so also grateful when I hit yeah. that button. This is much love to you all. Take Thank care. You. Keep safe, guys. Oh, we appreciate it. Bye, pretty lady. Bye, Barbie. Bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Now the search for the leave button. Begin. Oh, there we go. Oh, okay. she got it. Okay. Awesome, guys. I mean, I think uh, I really want to thank everybody who's joined in. Matt Shepard, Nina Martinez, uh, Denise, uh, Mike Lloyd, Peter Atkins, Hugh Ross, Bradley Gartz, one of our Kickstarter supporters, Marcus, one of our team members, such a talented artist and poet, uh, Sorkin E. Line, academic who wrote, dark, uh, edited uh, Clive, Barker Dark Imaginer. Of course, Lori, uber fan girl for Simon Banford fans and uh, uh, Dark Ditties. There, she has a pillow with Simon's face on it. I, I also have Gary, but Gary's not here anymore. So. Oh, there you go. And that's her and, dad. And of course, Hugh, thank you so much for, for joining us just to oh, celebrate with us a little bit. Yeah. And uh, we really appreciate uh, all the work that you've done and uh, all the time that you've given us over the years, especially about Nightbreed and answering all our weird, quirky questions. Yeah, yeah. thank you. Well, I'll ask you a quick I want to ask Ed something. Ed, how low does that mask come down? It Would you like please do us a quick soundbite? Narcisse what? says, listen to the Clive Barker <laughs> podcast. <laughs> oh. No, come on, show me. Show me how low that comes down there, please, Ed. That's I'm sorry. Um, you, we, have, we have the same mask. Hold on. It's got... Um, we got a, a oh, there we go. and a Phantom of the Opera mask uh, oh. on top of him. But yeah, it goes, oh, pretty, it goes down fairly okay. low, like down here. Okay. Um, oh, wow. Oh, wow. It's a very nice oh, mask. Okay. We've used so, it. We've, yeah. Yeah, we put it in one of our Hellbound Lament videos, and it's very difficult to see out of and breathe through. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I bet. That's the problem with masks. Yeah. You look. You look as if you're in a real treasure trove of memorabilia in there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. it's a nice vault that they got going there. Yeah, it's fine. That's <laughs> really amazing. Um, Hugh, could you just say this is Narcisse and you're listening to the Clive Barker podcast? And Hugh. Okay. This is Narcisse and you're listening to the Clive Barker podcast. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. Hello, Steelers. <laughs> okay. That gave me chills. Oh, that, that was, was wonderful. Great. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for asking me. Nice to see you. Yeah, well, it was good to see you again. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Keep in touch. Bye bye. Bye bye. Yeah, bye, -bye. bye, -bye.
you. Yeah, we're probably going to scooch on out also. Thank you so much. Real oh. fast, though, I wanted to say uh, in person to Peter Atkins, thank you so much for the Hellraiser 3 murdery uh, bar scene because it put us to sleep many a night when we were bartenders at a nightclub. <laughs> we were, we, and this was like for three, four years yeah, straight. Yeah, it it we, was our come down. <laughs> Like every oh, no. night for three to four years well, straight, we bartended at a nightclub in a hotel and it was horrible. I've literally never gotten into a fight in my life, almost got into a fight there. It was <laughs> the awful place. There were shootings, not oh. fun. Anyway, your, uh, yeah, Hellraiser 3, <laughs> help us get to sleep. Well, <laughs> we're just you're imagined. more than welcome, guys. I, <laughs> lovely, to see you, lovely to see you even virtually in person. Take care. <laughs> see you. Oh, okay, man. guys. And uh, <laughs> let's see. Um, but by the way, uh, Pete, did you ever direct uh, Hugh Ross in any scenes while you were uh, working in Nightbreed? I, I don't. Th I, I did. I did a lot of the Midian stuff uh, when this. There were three units. Um, the the fun action fight unit was handled by Andy Armstrong, who is the younger brother of Vic Armstrong, who and they sort of specialize <clears throat> in in that stuff. Um, I, I mean, I certainly, you know, was hanging around with you. I can't remember, to be sure. honest. I, I did a lot of the, um, you know, it was, a, it was my first time directing anything. So it was just a lot of the donkey work. It was a like, long time ago. Oh, yeah, second <laughs> unit. Okay, that's and, fair. Um, I mean, weirdly, I got to direct Anne in, in one scene, but that was just oh, because wow. we'd become close friends and she, rather than use the body double for her foot, uh, which which was all that was in the shot. She said, no, 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 I want to do it if Pete's doing it. So, um, oh, that's I, great. Yeah, it was, oh, 30, God, what is it, 31 years ago now? I, I, yes. I don't know. Yeah. Was Anne Bobby here? Yeah. No, oh, she's not. Soon. No, she couldn't make I it. with so. Nick. Anyway, yeah. yeah. Can't really, don't know. Wonderful. Well, guys, I think thank you. Know, you thank you, we, thank you, thank you. We got a great, uh, we got a great 300th episode. It was amazing. We got Clive phoning in. We got all Dark these people, the former guests, new guests with Doug. I just, my mind is blown, guys. I think <laughs> yeah, I'm just, yeah. I need a nap right now. <laughs> but thank you I'm so much for drive. Ryan for starting <laughs> me on this journey. Uh, if it wasn't for Ryan uh, asking me once in a forum uh, almost 10 years ago, hey, do you want to start a podcast? I don't think I, I would be here today doing this. So thank you so much, Ryan. You've been, yeah, yeah. You've been a brother. Thank you, Ryan. <laughs> thank you. Oh, thank thanks, you, everybody. Ryan. This was so fun. This was amazing. I, I just kept having this nightmare that nobody was going to show up to this. <laughs> <laughs> we got everybody, baby. Yeah. We got everybody. I know. Yeah. Can you believe it? Yeah, you did. And, you got pretty much everybody. I'm <laughs> well done, be, guys. Congratulations. It's been great. See, now we can all die. <laughs> and, and, and I just want to add, there's going to be an upcoming episode this year, which the theme will be picked by Eric Gross, who, oh, uh, yeah. who uh, also supported us on our Kickstarter. So we look forward to talking to you about what kind of episode you would like to make. Yeah. If it's going to focus on your work or your stuff. Uh, we'll, we'll be with you all, all the way. Okay. Yeah, yeah sounds great. good. Yeah, you know, actually, the, the weird thing I was going to say is that uh, <clears throat> is that the you guys worked so hard on the Midian remake and all, and I mm -hmm. finally sat down about two months ago to watch it, and mm -hmm. was just blown away by all the material that was just never showed in the theaters. It was a completely different film, and it was just really this is what should have been out in the first place. Oh, I it, agree. Yeah, it was just amazing work. It is. Uh, it was nice to be a part of that movement to make mm -hmm. the, the director's cut. And then ultimately, we also did the tr uh, commentary track for a, 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 a Blu-ray that came out with the Cabal cut, which kind of sold out pretty quickly. But uh, we, we had a lot of fun doing that commentary track. Yeah. It, it took a, a long while. I, I come up with all sorts of trivia, like this scene was done in a place that was next to the woodshed at Pinewood. It's like, I don't even, <laughs> don't even ask me where I found that information, but it was just... Yeah crazy yeah it was amazing thank you so much guys uh ryan do you want to give us the old outro and the this 300th episode having no beginning will have no end yeah Yay. Yay. congratulations congratulations fantastic <laughs> congrats thank guys you. i love you i couldn't be here without you thank you thank you congratulations thank you have a great Happy sunday thank have you so much Pete. bye-bye good to see everyone bye guys
Bye. Bye, guys. Thank you for joining us, and we hope you have subscribed. You can find the Clive Barker Podcast wherever you find audio. Show notes for this episode, as well as news and reviews, can be found at our website at www.clivebarkercast.com. The Clive Barker Podcast, or BarkerCast, is an independent editorial podcast and blog that is not affiliated with or under contract by Clive Barker or Seraphim Inc. This is a labor of love by the fans for the fans. Watch for our annual Kickstarter fundraisers to get some cool stuff, and you can buy t-shirts on our TeePublic store. Go to TeePublic.com and search for BarkerCast. Thanks for listening.